Hello, and we're live. At least I hope we are. Um, welcome to what is a very special Nerd D&D that doesn't do D&D today, because we are, in mm -hmm. fact, playing Dagger Heart. We're playtesting yeah. in the open beta Critical Role's new <coughs> narrative-driven campaign system and role-playing rule set and we've got a one-shot for you this evening which we're all quite excited about um as you can see things are a bit different i'm in the big screen tom's over there in the small mm. screen um i'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to have to actually play rather than well, be yeah. the forever dm Makes nice. a difference, doesn't it? Um, down below, we have got new logos. We are using a different virtual tabletop just because it was easy for me to learn. But so far, Let's Roll looks like it's quite good fun. So that's good. Recommend that. And obviously, Dagger Heart itself. Um, gone for most of you are D20s. So I get to wear the D20 t-shirt because I get to roll D20s. <laughs> you guys get to roll D12s. Um, but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So... They've all made characters. I've made uh, a world for a one-shot with room to grow if we like it. And, yeah, uh, before then, have we got any channel news, chaps, before we move on? Thompson I'm still knows. painting the giant. You're still painting the giant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we get that, get that giant out. Um, it, actually, steady on. my 3D printer went tits up today. Um, oh, no. I, 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 well, not the printer, but I, I accidentally pierced through my last VAT film. Oh. And uh, so oh, I can't 3D screen. print. Yeah. So that was the, the that went and the screen protector went and I don't have either. So uh, until I get 30 quid spare, there's Gary, no 3D Gary, printing, Gary, Gary, which, Gary, means, Gary. which means which means. The only option I've got is to film content because I can't print my oh, wonderful uh, orc pirate army that I'm trying to build. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so there'll be. More, I'll try and get that giant finished. Um, and I'm looking forward to that giant. To be honest, I'll uh, it too. it's been a while. Um, um, yeah. And I think I'm, I think I might do some terrain. I think I might do some. It's been a that little while. Since you've done some terrain, yeah, I haven't done any terrain for ages, so I've got I've got another world specific terrain would be really well. That's good. what I'm thinking. Yeah, so I've got another week before I'm back at school, so I'll uh, I'll knock up a bit of terrain, something right. cheap and easy for the old world. Yeah, what a good well, idea. and I know that uh, if you've not already seen it, Dave has been putting out uh, weekly um, reviews of the X Men '97 oh, series. Yes, which is if you've not seen it already. Do so. It is it amazing. Is and check then check out our videos because there are a lot of spoilers. Yeah, oh god, but, yeah. I, I keep saying no yeah, spoilers yeah. and then I just go off. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah there, it's a lie. There's a lot of spoilers. <laughs> um so yes, please do check those out as well. And yeah, there's gonna be just a lot of uh which we generally put a lot of stuff out. A lot of stuff is very Reactionary as and when stuff comes out uh, yeah, yeah. on top of um, the other bits and pieces, but Doctor Who. Um Doctor Who soon as well. Doctor Who is coming out soon, and the Fallout series is coming out soon. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, was, I was just about to say, at some point between now and when that comes out, I was going to do a video about what, what I'd like to see, what as a Fallout fan we'd Good like idea. to see uh, from the series, what sort of nods Great. we want to see to the game. So, as well as all our yeah. um, ongoing D and D, because in a couple of weeks' time we'll be back to actual D and D. Well, I'll be DMing again, so um, like, subscribe, make sure you go check that out. And we've got all our past episodes on our live stream, and also we have it all on as a podcast, which you can catch up on YouTube Music mm. app. So, which is easier to listen to on the go. So, check that out as well. Yeah, absolutely. And to sync up with the um, Fallout TV series, we'll be doing the Fallout tabletop role-playing game as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I will be games mastering, which means that's me, Dave, and Tom, which means Rash now has to write a campaign I for a, so. a different <laughs> role-playing game so that, <laughs> rules, so, yes. so that we've all done one. Absolutely. <laughs> Keeping ourselves busy, eh? And obviously sharing it with all of you, which is the important thing. So do like and subscribe because we are this close to getting to apply for YouTube partnership. And the more that you get involved, <laughs> the better that is for us. And if it's better for us, we'll make it better for you too. So, yes. All appreciated. Right. <clears throat> Shall we, uh, without further ado, um, jump in? Yes. Lovely. <laughs> I will. I'm a frog. 
<laughs> right then, let me just uh, let me find some music here. Uh, okay, previously Ooh. on her theory. No, sorry, wrong one. Um, I've always wanted to say that. Um, right, so we start our story in a small town by the name of Waterside. Now, this is a a, a working people's town. It's uh, it builds boats. It's been there uh, as part of the colonies um, of Baronhust for many, many years now. And only three trades. You've got farmers, you've got lumberjacks, and you've got shipbuilders. And it's a prosperous small town, and, you know, everyone gets on quite well with each other, and it's it's settled in its ways. Not used to much of an upset, but we find ourselves in a pub called The Launch. Now, The Launch is a reasonably well-to-do pub by the side of the river. Um, it's got um, it's got three stories. It's got rooms on the top floor. It's got a floor that you enter from the road on the ground floor, uh, which is common room, bar, places to eat. And then it's got a, a room below where you can actually sit down by the water, and that's because the owner likes to go fishing. So uh, he's got himself a little a little platform out back where he can uh, he can get away from the job and if you ever want him you have to find him down there. But that's not where we start. We start in the common room of this place, and I'll just bring up the. Um, firstly, I'm going to bring the music up, which is not playing. Um, what was this pub so called again? Sorry, called call uh, the launch. This is the, the launch. launch. The launch. The launch. The launch. A nice ploughman's. A nice ploughman's, um. and I will move you all over to Ooh. the uh, water side. Nice. Yes, there Ooh. we go. Um, oh, great music as well, I like that. Yeah, funny that. Um, you might be used to it already. <laughs> Once again, uh, Fiddlewall providing the music for us, as they have been through all of our oh, nice. uh, previous campaign with Etheria, um, because it is quite, quite magnificent. Um, so, yes. Um, and while we are doing that, I'm just going to reduce the audio volume so you can all hear us. Um, so the launch is the sole building just to the right of the bridge, below the tower and the walled area there. Nice big area. Oh, I hear. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And, and in in the common room, a smoky common room filled with uh, a few people looking to uh, charter a boat, a few people looking for people who want to charter a boat, and one or two very drunk locals, we find on the stage trying desperately to entertain everybody whilst the uh, regular um, entertainer looks on with a grumpy expression on her face, we find Gorbrad Gill. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, please, Gaz? I play Gorbrad Gill. Uh, I am a two foot four ribbit. Uh, I am uh, brightly coloured, like a tree frog. Uh, I wear... Gaudy Hawaiian print, Bermuda shorts, Hawaiian shirts, uh, bucket hats, and I'm basically a surfer dude, bard. Um, I'm a bard. I'm a. I'm nomadic. I go from town to town, uh, playing for my keep uh, and surfing, basically. And I'm just totally chill. You're just a happy guy. I'm just okay. a happy, chilled out frog. <laughs> and what are you playing for everybody at the moment? Or how are you keeping everyone entertained? Um, so, guys, I'm totally like... Um, this is like a 15-minute a, a beat poem. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm basically just... I'm uh, basically not singing, not playing an instrument. I'm literally just making up um, <laughs> a very lame poem um yes. as i'm stood on the stage but really like going for it and you know really feeling it um but i'm the only one that's really feeling it well i, I say see the sea and i like i i see the sea and i wave at a wave man <laughs> okay um because of that why don't you roll with instinct to see uh, oh, oh. How, how well you did? Um, First roll! You were probably going to get away with that until you told us how bad it was. Um, yeah. I imagine he's inebriated. He's already in the bar. 
You know, he's not been surfing. Uh, instinct is a plus one, and I got... <laughs> I got a critical success. I got two sixes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, outstanding. My first um, roll. Give yourself a hope, um, and you have no stress to clear, but you could have if you wanted. Um, right, well done. Okay. Um so you're looking around and you you weren't really feeling it to start with but as you look in the room you're like hey pe people are getting this and and you look over at the uh innkeeper who is uh, an elf girl called eloan and um she she sat there um cleaning the glass on this apron that's uh, embroidered with seashells and she's just got this big sort of enraptured grin on her face like she's she knows what you're saying it, she's feeling it in her absolute soul um well, then you look into another corner and uh, you take a quick sort of start because in the other corner, the first thing you notice is a tiger. Ah! Just sat, sat next to somebody at the table. Uh, a a Dot full size tiger? Well, I mean, yeah. Dottie, why didn't well, you explain it? She's a young tiger. She's about a year old, so not fully grown. I'm two foot four, Dottie. Good. <laughs> Uh, well, she's big enough then. A baby tiger, still a fucking big tiger for someone that's only two foot four. And sat next to her on the table is me, Nick. I'm a foot tall fairy ranger. <laughs> One foot tall. One foot tall. <laughs> yeah. And just a little fairy, just a little girl. <laughs> what, what do you think of the music? I've heard it before. I yeah, I'm like I'm just chilling. Chilling. So he's one trick pony sort of a guy. Fair enough. Um Okay, so that's what I want sorry, one second. Technical hitch. I tried to change window and hit tab and everything came up all of a sudden. Oh no. There we go. Right, that should be better for everyone now. Um so yeah. <clears throat> hang on. Oh, just wait. <laughs> just bit in the in the corner of the bar. The glowing child uh, attempts to get uh, <laughs> Nix's uh, attention. That's the innkeeper's daughter. Um, <laughs> but... Illuminated by the the candlelight on the end of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait for it to come back since there's only two of you in the room right now. Would you please just improvise a? Uh, a Another spoken word uh, poem about the sea for us. Well, this Cobra. this at this point now, um, as I see people are getting into it, and I'm sort of running out of ideas. Um, I I pull my tongue out because I'm a frog <laughs> and I've got a really long tongue, and I just start strumming it, ah, boom, 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 like a double bass, <laughs> and just start just start riffing on my own tongue, and then uh, the elf that was at the bar that was sort of giving me dreamy eyes. I sort of look at her, wink, and then as I let go of my tongue, I lick my own eyeball. <laughs> and then retract it. She is not sure what to think about that, to be honest. Um, she was liking the verse. She wasn't necessarily <laughs> against the uh, the baseline on the tongue, but the lick in the eye may have been a step too far for her. Um, <laughs> she uh, sort of shyly turns away and, uh, and, and gets someone else a drink. Um, and then... Coming up the stairs from behind the bar, from from down below, um, is uh, another person who shows up. He closes um, closes the door behind him, looks around, and you two will know this is Cedric Stonebridge. He's a um, human, uh, owner of the pub, regularly found down at the bottom, uh, on the bottom deck there, casting his rod in. Uh, but in this case, he, he comes up. Slaps two freshly caught trout on the uh, on the table. Yeah, cook them, would you? I'm feeling peckish. God, what is this shit that's going on in here? Who are you playing on my bar again? I've told you to get out once before. What dude, are you no, doing? Uh, dude, they're, they're, they're loving it, dude. Just, just leave me be. Look. You're here to make money. I'm here to make money. I'm making you money. You catch fish, you eat fish. Life goes on, man. Just <laughs> just live and let live. He's got a uh, sort of a furrowed, confused look on his brow, but uh, Eloan just sort of 
rests her arm on his uh, on his shoulder and is like, he, he is actually very good. You know, the, the patrons are really appreciating it, and I think he's excellent. Yeah, see, dude, leave me be. And I'm just going to turn around and I'm just going to stick the tongue out and start giving it some more. He scowls and uh, it's like, be that as it may, I'm still not used to this uh, newfangled music that the youth of today are making. So, anyway, lass, can thou look after this place? I've got council meeting. Bloody hate this mayor's job, me. I can't wait until it's someone else's turn. God dear. And he um, reaches under the bar and, and picks up a gold chain and puts it on and just gets a, a well-worn mayor's cloak that looks like it's been passed from mayor to mayor to mayor around the town uh, over many decades um, and heads out into the day. Um, and you carry on entertaining and Ello and has once again decided that you're quite a nice person to pay attention to. And um, Is there anything either of you want or need to do? As as the um, as the the mayor swings his mayoral cloak on, mm. um, which is quite tatty and and sparse, a moth just flies out of it, and I just <coughs> and that's gone. I'm having that. Well, that's my free that. free lunch. <laughs> Hello and chuckle. She saw it all. She's absolutely like not smitten, but. She's, you know, she'd buy your album and possibly a T-shirt if you had any at the end. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she, she's into it. Um, she she walks Merchandising. And, uh, um, stops by Nix's table and like, will there be anything else for you down there? Uh, just a thimble of uh, wine, please. Is that the red or the white? The white, please. She goes back and, uh, and starts to... And I'm to, telling uh, Lily, my tiger, to not move from my table since the fish is being put down. <laughs> Just sat there, like, still <laughs> dripping fresh and occasionally twitching on the edge of the bar. Um, Stay. <laughs> um, she goes off to uh, start... Um, I was about to say start pouring a thimble. But I don't think it's not something you start. It's kind of like done. So <laughs> <clears throat> she um, she gets the thing. Well, she starts walking back, but all of a sudden there's a uh, there's a commotion from outside, and yeah, hey, hey, come out and see this quickly, everyone out! And it's Cedric's voice, who's not got very far. Um, but do you all rush out? Do you stay in? Do you pay any heed? I hop on Lily and ride out. <laughs> Are the um are the patrons heading out? Everyone is sort of slowly getting up. The uh, yeah. half dozen well, if, people yeah. who are playing if, to us, like looking at the window and like, what's that? What's what's old Cedric want now? Is the window is the window open? It's not. No, it's uh, pretty dirty to be honest. The window onto the street. Um, Cedric cleans the ones that look over the river because that's the view he likes. Uh, does it does it look like it will open? Does it look like um, it will open or? It has a lever you can you could try and open. It might not have been done in some years, but yeah. Well, I'll it's um. An option. From how far away is this window from where I am? Oh, fifteen feet. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> sticky tongue and then swing from a rafter on my tongue to window. <laughs> Stick on like a tree frog. And <laughs> I want to be first out. Fair enough. Okay, so you are, and you do that no problem. There are plenty of rafters for you to aim for, um, and you've been doing this plenty of times. It's natural, second nature to you as a uh, as, as a ribbit frogman as you are. And so you head on out, and uh, Lily the tiger trots out with Nyx on their back, and so there's a gathering people, gathering throng of people. Just the bridge is the wooden bridge that crosses the river. It's the only bridge in town, um, and as you come out. You've got to your left, you've got the bridge, you've got the paved cobblestones in front of you, and opposite you is the wall of the old town, which is the only fortified part of the town, and it's not really been needed to be used as fortifications in many a year. But sort of in the middle of the road, not quite on the bridge, you've got Cedric, and he's like, Kurt, look up there, look at that! And, and you all look up, and it looks... Not to be a fireball, but it looks like there is like a rock or something 
trailing smoke and falling from the sky, coming sort of from southwest and, and heading to the sort of northeast. Um, and as you look up, um, Nix, would you uh, roll with agility, please? Agility. Uh, which one was that one? All I could think while you were describing that is doing a, a Star Trek scene. <laughs> <laughs> Nine. So, 2d12, whatever you uh, have in agility and any experience you feel you can add to that. Right. Oh. 11, I've got plus 2, so that's 13. Is it with hope or fear? It is with my hope. Oh, take a hope. Excellent. Um, so, as you're looking up, literally as you come out at the back and you look up and this thing goes overhead, a uh, uniformed soldier slams into the road and you just sidestep and just it just misses you. Yeah. Um, and uh, Lily's like, gets ready to go and everyone looks around and goes, oh my God, the tiger's gone wild. Um, and we immediately go up several thousand feet into the air and staggering <clears throat> on a booking deck amidst smoke and flame and uh, shouts and clash of metal and the whine of arcane engines is the um, the star dancer which is our ship and on the ship flotsam and jetsam who have just found a gap in uh, the melee that is going on as green skin raiders um are pouring over the side of uh, a ship that is attached to them by um by ropes and hooks and um you're looking around and it's it's eerily quiet i mean there's this yells and everything but considering you are coming down at a rate of knots you're not feeling a wind or anything as yet um and then at the back of the ship so it's you've got a four deck and an aft and then you've got a, a lower part in the middle and then the back section a door slams open and a uh, a dwarf sticks his head out well hold on and went grab on tight now grab on as tight as you can we're gonna lose the shields it's gonna get mighty windy now and as he says windy <laughs> Both of you roll with agility, please. Oh, I... Ooh. <clears throat> uh, oh, that's the hope, and that's a fair. Oh, uh, critical oh. success, double twos. Double twos? Okay, so take a oh, hope. That is a... Oh, what's that? That's very cocked. I'm going to re-roll that one, because it's very cocked. Okay, uh, so that is... Um, 15, what's my... I'm uh, minus two for agility. So that is 15. 13 with hope. Okay, so you take a hope, but you lose your footing. Um, uh -huh. And as this wind starts blowing you, you are off your feet and going back, but um, you go straight past Jetsam, who just catches say, can I catch on the him? way past yeah. at the same time. Master Jetsam! Um, Please help me! And it is now a howling gale, and you'll both know this, is that um, you were coming from out of the atmosphere. You were on your way back, and um, you were suddenly waylaid by this and a number of other boats um, and you were driven down into the atmosphere with this one boat and normally when you're up there you've got an air shell so that you can breathe and you're not affected by things and that has just failed and that's what the dwarf who you both know as Orion Darkthorn who's the ship's engineer uh, he um, just got this warning out in time and without it as you saw two or three other people go over the side one of which impacted right next to Nyx um <laughs> And is now pizza. Um, uh, but as you're falling down, you can see uh, all around you there are there is chaos, there is smoke, parts of the ship are on fire. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any control. Uh, you both look to Orion uh, and it's like, where's the captain? And you'll both know that the captain is on the other ship. 
trying to repel borders in the most offensive way possible. Um, and so, take a look around. Or what do you want to do? Uh, oh, did, did you say we're under attack? You're in the middle of yeah. combat. No one's Why, near you right now. The three right, of you. Why all pirates? Yeah. Oh, the, the th pirates. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had well, this idea um, before you started painting orc pirates, and we'll tell you now. Um, <laughs> well, I wondered well, when I said I want my character to be an orc pirate, and you were like, that's going to make things really complicated. <laughs> I, I see why now. Yes. So, are, are we, like, quite a steep descent? You are it... You are beyond, sort of, 35 degrees. You are, you know... So if I were to let go of uh, Flotsam, he's going to fly over. He's either going over well, or he's hitting the um, the deck at the back. I shall... Uh, to the wall. I'll, I'll in, that, in that case, I will... Uh, I'll take a stress, and I'll use my wings to take flight. I mean... Uh, Okay, you are moving fast. <laughs> you no longer have an air shell. You are, you are welcome to try. Um, but you are thousands of feet in the air. And um, go The air it, shell have failed. You, you were informed to take hold. <laughs> in that case, I maybe won't take fly then. Uh, yeah, I've not fully grasped really this situation. Uh, okay, it, can I then... Um, could I try and rope attach myself to some sort of balustrade with a rope Absolutely. so I'm not... And, and while um, Jetsam has you in his arms, you should have no problem on either reaching the mast or the side. You know, yeah, um, that. It's, it's not the widest deck. It's probably 15, 20 feet wide. Uh, so you can pretty much reach wherever. And you say, the three of you, Orion and you two, find yourselves in this gap. Uh, and, and while that's going on, and I assume you're just rooted at this moment, Jetson. Uh, yes. Um, I will have um, firmly um, dug my uh, grip into um, the, the, the wood of, of the side, um, which is kind of almost kind of splintered as I've been gripping mm. onto it and, and try pulling him in. Um, yeah, firmly holding my uh, position. Okay. And, I, maybe um, have, I maybe should have tied myself to you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but you didn't. No. <laughs> so, uh, as you root and you lash yourself on, uh, Orion takes two or three steps forward, and he seems to have no problem. He seems, if you look at him, it seems that as he walks forward, air sort of parts around him um, and then carries on, on behind. So he seems to be in his own little happy bubble. Uh, and as, as he gets close to both of you, you kind of feel the same relief for a moment, and it's quiet enough amid the howling gale that he's like, Look! We're gonna have to cut it loose. There's no way. I've got, uh, there's too heavy. The engine's failing. I cannot hold us both in the air. I do not have the power to do it. And if you okay, that, just say the word. I shall. I shall go and cut them for you, Master Blackthorn. <laughs> it's like, hey, can we get them back? And you look and over I'll, there. I'll get, and the I'll, the I'll get my cat greatsword out and go. <laughs> where are these ropes? I need to cut. There are four. <laughs> Thing, four ropes that are essentially all at this point in time that the ship that came into here although it works in space it does not look like it was particularly designed for atmospheric or in fact ocean going flight whereas you are on and the ship that you are on is a traditional sailing ship but it just yes. so happens to have an air shell and it can fly you know, extraplanetary flight at that. It's been grafted to the capabilities. <laughs> yeah, it is. You've got a you've got a handy engineer who knows what he's doing. Um, uh, but what he's telling you is basically these ropes are holding that ship on, and that ship is pulling you down, and uh, you're down to one engine. Um, so there's a very little chance right now that you're gonna have to do anything. So he's pointed out that one there and these here as quick as you can now. Okay, yeah. They'll have to go for themselves, there's no way! And you look at it, and there's really not many people left. To, uh, there's, there's a load of Greenskins who are finishing off ratings and people you knew, and you look over there, and Captain First Mate and, and Bosun are all on the other ship and sort of being backed into a corner. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to get back without taking out about 15 opponents. So That's that then, I'm just... Start ripping the. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm following. Uh, this, I'm a newbie on the ship. I'm mm. a. I'm a. Yeah, I'll follow, follow my. Uh, oh, I'll follow orders. <laughs> yeah. 
This is all I know to follow orders. I'll, I'll start <laughs> at the opposite end. You say there were four ropes, so yeah, I'll start. Because I don't. Have I know, a Mr. Shot. Jetson, yeah, I will go such. to this one. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So, given the situation, then each of you choose whether you want to roll with strength or agility. Strength. Roll with strength. <laughs> oh, a sixteen with fear. Uh, sixteen with hope. Okay, so you both succeed. Um, however, you um, when you roll with fear, uh, what happens is that the uh, the rope lashes back and sort of knocks you off your feet. Um, and although you are lashed on still and secure, you're no longer able to get to the rope next to you because you've got to get up first. You, you're kind of sort of dangling now and you've lost your footing. Uh but, I, um, but you have um, no problem whatsoever in lashing yours, uh, Jetsam. You're absolutely fine. Done. Next one. Yeah. <laughs> moving up. Um, in fact, your roll, to be honest, was for both of them. So there's only one oh, left because you, you, you did one, but then uh, things went horribly wrong for you. So one more to go. You want to get yourself back on your feet or do you want to, you know... Uh, yes, the, I shall. Yes, I've just realised... I was just looking at my abilities. I just realised I didn't roll my prayer dice. Oh. So I'll I'll do that now. So this start the session. Well. Very sorry. <laughs> yes, I dismissed this at the start. <laughs> Completely forgot about it. So I've got to roll two d four. Two d four, and then I put these to one side, and I can add them to rolls and and oh, uh, other other things. Um, mm -hmm. But I would like to sort of. I know it, it's a combat ability, but I'd like to sort of use it to try and swing at the rope. So mm -hmm. I'd like to em imbue my greatsword I used to. Um, Cut the rope with like, spiritual energy and throw it uh, at the rope to try and slice it that way, and have it go out and cut the rope and return back to me. Okay, sort That's of like no false hammer, but with a great sword. All right, roll again. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, that's a uh, fourteen with fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right, um, so um, you miss the rope. Um, ah. The sword embeds in the deck just in front of it, and you just, it sparks come out of where it hits, and the whole ah. the whole ship lurches. The spark and the lurch is enough that um, the last remaining rope holding this weighty ship snaps, and you go your separate ways, but then you drop. And all of a sudden, um, you're latched onto the deck. Orion is, is fine in his little uh, bubble. And you are up in the air, attached to your rope, as the ship starts to absolutely plummet. And that's where we ah. leave you. Um, and oh. back, back on the ground, the crowd watching uh, it has got bigger uh, in the last minute or so as, as these two things come down and smoke and a couple more bodies have fallen, a couple of green skins another couple of uniformed people and suddenly they break and they split and one goes out over the sea and then banks in towards land and the other one heads out over the forest towards the hills and they're both out of sight and gone um, you, you have no more knowledge about that. The last thing the uh, people on the ship see is um, Orion going, I'm holding it as fast as I can, but we're going down. Brace, brace. And you impact water. Uh, I'm trying uh, to pull him back yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair point, actually. Do you want to see if you can do that before um, I, the impact? Before, before the impact, could mm. I have had the sword return to me, but have it return and cut the rope and then I'll mark a stress to try and let my wings go and fly and yeah. go above the sort of go into the air a bit before the impact happens to try and sort okay. of save yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, that works. Go for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as you do that and you the sword cuts the rope and your wings go and you like you just open a parachute go and the boat just Oof. drops below Ooh, you. Yeah. Uh, and you were not far from hitting the ground. You were maybe a hundred feet up at this point. Um, and Jetson then just pulls in on an uh, end of the <laughs> rope. <isn't it? laughs> um, and then slam into the water but you are in very close to the shore. And you know the, the bottom of the boat is enchanted to take 
you know, aerial descents into water. So it's designed for that, but not at this speed. And there's the splintering sound, and there's a crashing sound, and there's the sudden forward motion that you all experience as the boat has come to a very swift stop. Um, that is the last you know about it for a short while. Um, mm. You on the air, circling around, you can see that everyone, most have been thrown off the boat, um, some have been absolutely splattered, and okay. it is I, firmly ploughed into the ground. I'll, I'll try and... We, it, it was water that we crashed into, do you say? Water, crashed into right, the ocean. right at the edge. It's, it's literally ah, on, so it's on all, Yeah, it's a very you, shallow water. You, you've skidded, you, like, you bounced off the water, and then ploughed into the beach. Oh, okay. Right, right where I the will, is. I'll head, start heading down, seeing if, uh, yeah. see if there's anybody that I could maybe help or see if anybody needs assistance what you immediately see is um uh, uh, orion is still stood there not quite sure how <laughs> they just made the air around him perfectly calm but everybody else there are um jetsam is in the water uh, and motionless um, a lot oh. of stuff uh, has been thrown overboard. There's uh, splinters everywhere. There are barrels. Any, all the sails. And what it looks like happened is while you were dangling and you were trying to reel him in, Orion triggered the sails and used them to slow your descent oh. while you're in the air. Pulled them down and they've ripped to shreds. But without it, you'd have hit at terminal velocity. Uh, and so the ship has taken some severe damage, but you're all still to a degree, alive. Not just you, uh, but you are seeing sort of movements and sort of um, green skin slowly starting to get up. Oh, no. Um, I will um, and I'll no... head <clears throat> towards <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Jetsam in the water yeah. and try and fish fish him out. Get him up yeah, and, get was, him was, on was, the land. I was just <laughs> face, face down <laughs> and started to sink. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. Quick I'll do my best to try and go and grab him and fish him out. Uh. Um, so yeah, um, as you do that, um, Orion has managed to get two people. One very much with a bone sticking out where his kneecap should be, uh, oh. uh, and the other one uh, with a very limp arm and a massive gash across his head. And he's dragging them off the boat as fast as he can. He's in reasonably hale health, but those two are really worse for wear uh, and as he gets onto the beach there's two more um, deckhands on the beach who were lucky that they hit something relatively soft after bouncing off the boat but again they're not for moving right now they're just not dead um, and so he starts um, dragging them uh, and you take shelter behind the rocks but as you um, as he looks back and sees you with Jetson and beckons you over come on down come on on my way sir quick man and uh, I'll yeah uh, as, as you, uh, put I'll be, down, I'll be right? tapping, tapping Jetson on the head. Wake up, Mister Jetson. I'm awake. I'm uh, awake. Uh, <laughs> we seem to have crashed. We've, we've, we've definitely crashed. This is my first crash. What do we do in this situation, Mister Jetson? Look around. It's like mm, visible concern. There's lots of concern. <laughs> As you see um, that, you, you see that um, more and more. Um, Greenskins are sort of pulling themselves up on the boat now that they now clearly control. Do we engage, Mr. Jetson, or what should we do? Uh, at which point, then, I just drill my shield and mace, and then I uh, just start wading in. It's <laughs> like, uh, we, we, we take it back. <laughs> yes. No, 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 look, look. There's only Good idea, Mr. Jetson. Come, come back. This is Orion, by the way. Come, come back here. No, look. And he, ah, um, I think he, he wants us back there. He reaches into his pack and he, he pulls on this device and fires up into the air what looks like a firework. And it's okay. just this flare that goes mm. and then stays up there hanging in a parachute that it sort of seems self propelling and it's hovering over this bay nice. that you're in. Oh. And he said for help. Well, hold this position. We can't take it with only three of us. Okay, who needs uh, who needs help? Which of the deckhands need help? All of them. Yeah, All well, of them. I'll go to the uh, the quietest ones first. 
Is that mm. the one with the compound fracture coming out of his kneecap, or the one whose arm is nearly taken off, or well, the, the are one they who's both got severe conscious? sandburn? Um, oh. Now they're not. They were as they got off the boat, but they've sat down, and now they've passed out from the pain. Oh, well, uh, um, the one with the uh, fracture, then. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, what are you going to do? Just a, I, I, this, this is it. Uh, there's not a lot that Jets um, can really do. Um, it, other, other than uh, just kind of uh, assess and just like, okay. just <laughs> like just go in there like right in that kind of a trying to help. Not sure how. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> ro- roll with instinct for me. Instinct. Oh, a nice yeah. plus zero. <laughs> um, that's ten with hope. Take a hope, and that will just do. You look, these people. There's nothing you can do for them here. They're gonna need no. serious medical attention <laughs> it's just or like, well, intervention. Um, and as you're doing this, you hear Orion say, "Look, pull those barrels, pull those over here." And as you do, arrows start zinging over. Yep, yeah, defensive positions. Yeah, we've um, got it. We've got shield up this. to defend the. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll put shield up to defend um, the the wounded whilst I'm or we're using the other hand to drag. Um, which, which of the uh, which of the compound factor and the guy who's lost an arm looks more helpable? Like, what, is it I a mean, compound factor on his leg? It's, oh. it's, um, hang on, bear with me. See the kneecap here. Yeah, down here has come out of the. It's gone up. Yeah, it's yeah shot yeah. up through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is so in my. Uh, that's, that's the manifestation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, what's my? What's the domain called? Uh, splendor. In my knowledge of the splendor domain and my mending touch, it says I lay hands upon a creature and channel healing magic to close their wounds. Now is that closing <laughs> their wounds? Right. I don't you know if closing the wounds would do uh, anything. I, you can close <laughs> the wound around the bone, but I think yeah. unless you put the bone back in, it's that wouldn't not gonna... it, that wouldn't help. I'd, I'd be aware that wouldn't really help. Well, he, unless your healing touch is like no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you've got, you've got put, yeah, you, you you can't really close a wound when there's still something in it. Okay. So, so I'll be like, this is a this is a little bit above my station. <laughs> I'm going to help Jetson, and I'll draw and my do that, sword again. A couple of and... arrows zing overhead again, and you're just like, right. Um, <laughs> and then we cut back to the town. Then, as you're taking up your stations, and as you are all looking mightily um, confused as to what the hell just happened. Uh, Sergeant Pickett of the local town watch, who is a uh, tall, lithe Qatari gentleman, um, for all the world, if you will, just imagine Lionel. Um, (laughs) Because all Qatari are Thundercats, I don't care what you say. Um, (laughs) He he comes down with um, the current duty uh, duty team, and uh, you've both been in town for a bit. You'll know these two. There's a um, Isolde Stonegate, who is a giant and is a mighty tall lady, Um, and normally she patrols the coast looking for smugglers because you know if you've got a giant like that that's all you need no one apologies i'll just have to be back in a moment no problem um uh, and uh, in addition there's the local not quite police community support officer but bran meadowbrook is a really happy halfling um (laughs) and uh, he knows every child's favorite sweet he uh organizes the annual meadowbrook picnic where the whole town comes together and has a pie making competition uh and he's just cheerful little halfling chap who is very you know nothing bad happens in his world he you know is just the very essence of community policing through approachability this is completely outside of his wheelhouse and he looks absolutely shocked like no idea what's going on um and but uh, sergeant magnus uh, is like right this looks bad mayor don't you say i think we should send people to investigate He's like, oh, yes, no, it's a very, very good idea, yes. Uh, where did he go, did you happen to know? I'm like, well, the smaller vessel veered off into the hills. I send his all day to look, but I think... I think the lumber camp will deal to help those, no problem. However, it looks to have hit near the old smuggler's cove, the other ship. 
There's a red glow in the sky. I feel we should take a party now. This is only the three of us today. Is there anyone here who could help? <laughs> he looks down. <laughs> yeah, I think. I, um... And he, 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 he mews in in cat. <laughs> Asking the tiger if the tiger just said me. <laughs> I, I just jump on top of the tiger's head, like, no, that me. Well, oh. yes, there as well, but me. I'm so sorry. He's a fine friend you've got there. Yes. Strange taste in fish. Um. Uh. So you. Uh. Anyone else? And yeah, I think. Save... I think. Given that um the mayor doesn't seem that enamoured with me, and um <laughs> and the barmaid's watching, I probably <laughs> would. Uh, I probably would volunteer as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make a uh, roll with presence for me? Uh, as you say I, you'll go and help. Uh, roll with presence. Oh, it's a plus two. Yeah. And any experiences, don't forget, that you've got that you might want to add. Um, that is only a seven, but with hope. Seven with hope. So you... Uh, Puff uh, your tiny reptilian chest out and uh, like, I got this. Give her a wink on the way past. And um, as you're about to go there, you trip over the tiger's tail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and just flat on your face. And she just goes <laughs> um, and laughs at you. And it's not unkindly. But it's ne not necessarily had the heroic exit you were hoping it was going to have. Um, it was like, yeah, excellent. Two uh, small additions to our search party. Anybody, anybody taller? Um, and one or two people pop the hand up, and um, there's a, a burly bloke uh, in a check shirt who, you know, is obviously a lumberjack, uh, and. Um, some older gnarled handed guy who uh, you've seen uh, before down at the anchor uh, whenever you've been trying to perform there or whenever you've been visiting the uh, the brothel upstairs uh, and you know as one of the uh, the local fishermen uh, and that's it that's that's the lot um, like well I suppose it'll have to do and quick it's a mile up the road mile two miles up the coast we get horses, it'd be quick. Does anyone have a horse? No! You've got a tiger. Can you ride the tiger? I can ride the tiger. Okay, you can ride behind me, frog boy. Um, so you... you no, may... dude, no disrespect, dude, but I don't ride with anyone. And I pull my bow staff out from behind me, and mm. I sprint off with a combination of bow staff, tongue, bouncing. I just parkour straight out, out of sight. I'm off. <laughs> You've gone straight ahead. Yeah, All fuck right, him. Then. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to save face. All right, then I'm gonna. Yeah, right, okay. You, you're getting yourself a lot of rolls this evening. Um, I'm like, shall I let him? And then you put one little bit more in, and I'm just like, you've gone too far now. Uh, roll with agility. Uh, that is <laughs> double four critical success. <laughs> Take a little stress <laughs> if you need to, and um, <laughs> you're gone. You, I mean, you're already on the road out of town, but by the time they get uh, to the gatehouse that's, uh, as you can see, is sort of on the way to the east there, and get their horses out, you're already half a mile up the road. Um, do you wait for them, or do you keep going? No, I keep going. You keep going? Do you know where you're yeah. going? Yeah. No, no, I did. Well, I'm heading <laughs> towards the flare. Okay, I think I think enough. I've I think I've been around the sea long enough that I would recognise the flare. So I think yeah. yeah, I'm just heading towards the flare. How long has your character been in the area? This area, a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, so you probably by now know that this is the only beach. If we uh, yeah. um, just move back to the other map, hang on. I will have I undoubtedly will have been surfing there. Um, yeah. um and we go back to that map. There we are. Um, you'll see that literally it's cliffs everywhere, apart from past Bryn Farm. There in the east is the, uh, the oh yeah, one I see it. The, the one oh, beach. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. 
Uh, it's yeah. not an easy one to get to. Uh, all these these are tall cliffs, uh, and that's why you're a riverside town because there's no other you, there's no other way to do it. Uh, but to work on the river and build docks to actually gain access. Uh, and so yeah, so you're heading on that direction, and, and you're being quite fast. You're doing well, but obviously everyone else comes up behind you on horseback, and pretty much as you get to the cliffs and you can see where the flare is they're kind of caught up to you the horses are absolutely exhausted and nix is there did you get uh, did you ride the tiger yes i rode the yes tiger. you rode the tiger <laughs> excellent um so nix is there uh, as is magnus um the halfling has stayed behind to try and uh, ease the fears of everyone um and it's a very, very narrow path down. Uh, it's like, right, let's scout the area and see. You two, go down. Points to the small two who is just recruited. We'll check on the cliffs up here. <clears throat> aye, aye, sir. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, no, no, sorry, dude. So the two massive, like, trained soldiers are going to stay up here and the two tiny dudes are going to go down there. I see. Uh, it's a uh, exploratory exercise. We're not cut out for this. Uh, we just want to know what we're facing. It makes no sense to send your best people in ahead. Keep a uh, good reserve, I say. <coughs> okay. Me. Yeah. No. He's no worries, dude. <clears throat> um, Operation uh, Operation Human Shield. Then, Nix. Let's go. <clears throat> for the record, there's only one human in the party. And that's the lumberjack. <laughs> oh yeah, we're not humans, either, are we? No. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, Nick's Operation Frog Fairy Shield. Let's go. Yay. Um, right. So as you descend, you are met with the following scene. Just bear with me while I make this happen into Windows. He says tentatively. <clears throat> Is go. it a pleasant picnic on the beach? Oh, it could be. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, just some green skins, just chilling out. Big thing on the insect corpse. Have you guys got that? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's what you're oh, yes. met with. Um, and it is a mess. The boat is um, dug in firmly. The sails are shredded. Um, the fires on the boat have mostly died out, but they're still smoking. <clears throat> As you get your first the mast good look are still in. intact. Uh, the masts are amazingly still intact, but only because the sails gave out. Uh. They shredded. Um, whether that's a safety feature or not, uh, you've you've no idea. Um, but we have got... Let me just drop a few people on so you know where you are. I don't think I can. Oh, drop yourselves on. You might have to drop yourselves on here, actually. Uh, you see the boats in the top uh, corner uh, by the rock? Yeah. Oh, there. yeah. Oh, there we go. You, you guys are up there. Um... I'm just going to make you fit a square a bit better. Yeah. So yeah, I think I can do that. Yeah, yeah you can probably shrink it down as well. I haven't got. Yeah, I, I would work um, on that. And you guys come in that top area there, and just bear with me one second. Uh, we need to have someone else join the battle. Oh, it needs to join on that layer though, otherwise it all goes horribly wrong. There's Grom. your dwarven engineer, uh, Orion. Oh. He's not Grom. He's Orion. Just a convenience <laughs> of the uh, image that we, we've used in oh, previous videos. Uh, Grom and Scotty watches... had a baby. <laughs> You're two weeks early, Grom! <laughs> um, speaking of, hang on a second. Da, 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 da. Yay! It's a very tiny tiger. Tiny there you go. Tiger. Um, and I will give you control of the tiger. There you go. That's yours. Nice. Thank you. Um, so, uh, as you get down, this is the scene you're met with. And you can see these people over here. And you can see the smoke. And there's not much in the way of battle going on at the moment. But, speaking of battles. 
There we go. Better music for it. Um, as you look around, you can see oh. that a number of greenskins have taken up positions and are occasionally firing the odd arrow over towards the rocks over there where you ah. can see a few survivors. And what on earth is that giant Nyx doing there? Um, I was going to say, why is there a giant fairy appeared all of a sudden? I, did I, oh, yeah, I don't have that. Time. What's that ability that you've got? Nick, so you can make yourself giant. There yeah. you go. I, <laughs> that may I be wish. because I gave you control. Can you move the tiger? Yes. Yeah, you can. I can Perfect. Move it. You don't need that giant version of you telling me you can then. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, you can see um, that there are uh, a number of archers on the prow of the. Um, the prow of the ship firing over towards the distance. Uh, there's a couple taking up position to sort of defend the approach behind the scattered rocks, uh, so scattered broken barrels and a couple of corpses um, uh, on the edge of the beach there. And there's a couple of armed ones that are, are looking like trying to make a move up, but each time they do, they just they, they, they tend to chicken out. It's like this impasse where neither team is necessarily confident in taking the other one. Uh, so what do you do? Uh, would, with, I mean, orcs are a, 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 a playable race, aren't they? Would, would we necessarily know that, <laughs> who was the good guys and who was the bad guys here? Yeah, okay, so, orcs are a playable race in the game, but in this world, on the planet you're in, there are no orcs. There are no ah, right. orcs, there are no, orcs are... It's semi-nomadic pirate raider tribes, orcs and goblins both, that live out in the solar system. Um, so I would instantly recognise um, these as enemy. You, you would have heard. You wouldn't recognise... They, they're not something you'd have ever encountered before, but you'd have read right, stories okay. about. Whereas yeah. the, um, the people on the ship, this is an everyday risk um, of uh, your job. Uh, and serving on the Star yeah. so you'll have come across them a couple of times in the past. Um, how far did you say? What was the range? Is how how far was close range? How many squares yeah, yeah, do we yeah, say? Yeah, here. Clo close is about thirty feet. But far that's, is that's up to hundred. Right. Very far is over hundred to the edge of the map. Uh, are we saying these are like five feet? Uh, approximately. Yeah. Again, it's flexible. Yes, give or take. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give or take. Yeah. So they're about thirty-five feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, go on, if you've got an idea. I, 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 Jetson, take the lead, please. Yeah, which is exactly what I was going to, I was going to um, leap over barrels and head further down. I was hoping to then move, it's not the full 30, 5, 10, 15, it's 20 up to there, which to say that I've also leapt over some barrels was probably about as far Mm -hmm. I'll probably get. Um, and then I was wanting um, Flotsam to have been following me so I can be shielding yeah. him from arrows as as we approach. Are okay, you going so... over the rock or, or around the edge of it? Or... Uh, well, we, was, we, we were like uh... um, on the beach going up the, the side okay. of, of the rock. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm well, I, I don't think out. I'd have noticed the other people have, have arrived on the beach yet. So you're actually I'll, making I'll a move hover. on your own. Okay, cool. I'll hover just behind him, like, sort of flying, but trying to keep behind him. Yeah, so so I can shield you, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, I guess whilst, whilst running over, I'll draw my sword and I'll try and throw it with my spiritual weapon at the... Uh, the closest one to me, I guess. Are these the ones up on the... Um, yeah. The but, archers yeah. on the prow of the boat, or are we talking about yeah. the... Uh, archers the on the archers on the bow of the ship. Okay. Uh, so. Um, right, as you do that then, um, and they're trying to take cover while taking pot shots behind the rails, so uh, roll your attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, what do I, I add plus two dice for um, Okay. Is your proficiency? It's your um, 
your weapon plus your your weapon plus is it the relevant stat you're rolling with plus any proficiency you have in it? No. Uh. Ah. Uh, oh, plus one is proficiency. So plus two. So plus one proficiency and then plus two strength. So plus three. Okay. So you're on plus three. So it that's fifteen with fear. Plus three, so 18. 18. You definitely hit. I will take a fear. Um, um, and when I... I guess my, my flying ends as well, because it says until you next throw with fear, so I'll drop to the ground. Until you, you drop to the ground so, there. So the, um, so the effort of throwing my spiritual weapon has sort of knocked me off balance, and uh, mm. I've dropped to the floor uh, as, as I've thrown you land, it. Um, not the one you're targeting, but the other one will take a pot shot at you. Um, do I, do I need to roll? I, I need to roll I damage. Have, um, you need you need to roll your damage first. Yes. Right, can I, uh, have, uh, as part of that movement, have used my unstoppable class feature, which I've does. triggered it? Um, once per long rest, I can become unstoppable. Um, oh, basically, nice. it starts on a count of four. Each um, time I roll for damage, it counts down, and when I've run out, it it. It ceases to be unstoppable, um, and whilst I'm unstoppable, I gain resistance to physical damage and additional d6 to damage rolls I make, and can spend stress to re-roll the single die roll. Okay, cool. I'll put a counter four on there. Um, um, X so, so it was twelve damage to that 12 one. Twelve damage, and then I also wanted to mark a stress and apply the attack to the uh, to the one next to it because I believe it was in range. To have this sword arc round and sort of hit one and travel on to the other before it returns back to me. Okay, so you uh, have to roll the attack. Yeah, again. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so that was twelve damage to that one, and this is only. Oh, but I shall. I'll apply my free from my uh, prayer dice. This was seven with hope. Plus three, plus three. So 13 with hope on that one. 13 with hope. That one misses. Yes. Yeah. That one misses. Ooh. Yeah. Um, you Ooh. would have maybe been all right, but because they're sheltering behind it, um, it doesn't uh, quite connect. Uh, but, but it was um, all damage on the other one. Yeah, so the other one, you um, do uh, severe... So, no, third lit tier of damage, not severe. Major damage, is it? I'm trying to remember it now. Um, either way... It's minor, three major, severe. minor major severe. Minor major severe. Yeah, severe damage. So you kill that one. Oh, nice! In one so hit. So I um, cleave, cleave its head off, I guess. Um, which is beautifully done. And he, as soon as I load the right part of the page up, Mr. Jetson, did you see that? <laughs> I took his head clean off. Very impressive, Flossum. Hmm. Oh dear, he's got bigger. Um. <laughs> He's gone. Uh, the other one, however, will have a go at getting you because you exposed yourself when you landed and were a bit wobbled. <laughs> uh, I try not to, but it's just the way my armor is. It just... <laughs> <laughs> it's just what it is, eh? And that was enough to make him go, oh, no. Um, so he is going to roll. Um, oh, uh, and he rolls 18 on the d20. Uh, that's uh, my evasion. He's got to be a, a beat, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's only seven. Um, oh, okay. Uh, then he oh, it would only be I'm... five now. It'd only be five now as well. Oh, I'm going to um, mark a stress, and for any ally very close to me is going to take damage. I may uh, stand in its way and take the damage instead. You're going to take the oh. damage. It's very heroic of you, Jetson. Okay. Um, it's what I do? Two d six. Um, so that is seven damage. I have gained resistance to physical damage. Excellent. So that is rounded up because we round up in Daggerheart. We do not round down like we do in D and D. Uh, so that is uh, four physical damage. Um, my uh, minor threshold says six next to it, so it's one. Uh, you might know we do not. You do not take any physical. No, damage. you don't you, take you any. Mark a stress. Oh, nice. Yeah. If you if you I are. Just... You mark a stress. If you damage, but it doesn't cross one of your thresholds, it's one stress. Yes. Uh, and if your stress ah, fills okay. up, then you start taking hit points. Uh, right, fine. I'll just mark a stress and do not take any damage. 
Yes, Done. excellent. Uh, right, before we go any further, I really need a wee. So I'm very quickly just going to take us to a very <laughs> quick break um, because I just want to be able to concentrate fine. through this. Uh, so uh, we'll be right back, everybody, and it will be a quick one uh, because we're quite early on.
And we're back. Sorry about that. Everyone's suitably refreshed and ready to go, and possibly the shortest break in our history. So, uh, let's go. Um, we had just got uh, combat underway, and it looked like Flotsam had just decapitated one of the raiders with his mystical blessed sword. Um, the raider retaliated, and Jetson stood in the way and took the hit, at taking only a stress because it was puny puny arrows from the greenskins um <clears throat> having seen you guys get up and run and sort of looking off to the side and seeing that uh possibly help has arrived uh and that the uh lunatic gung-ho um shipmates of his have just run off towards the boat uh orion is gonna sort of oh jesus right okay and he'll just pu pull out some uh gauntlets and he'll pop them on and as he pops them on um, and sort of moves his arms around sort of like gusts of air move with them um, as he uh, shrugs his shoulders and is like ah, I didn't want to have to do this today and he, he leaps over as well now he doesn't come and, and make an attack because um, there's not really anyone for him to get but he is going to leap up and sort of get underneath the prow here uh, out of sight and waiting to take his opportunity um, should someone come near him um, uh, what about anyone else? Uh, remember, there are no initiative values. In how this, far? So how how far can no. you travel? Um, uh, you can make thirty feet, um, providing it's not full of obstacles and combatants. Uh, but you should, you know, it, it's I say thirty feet, like we're talking th feet and inches. You can go um, close range. You can move within your close range as part of an attack action. Um, I mean, can your I... view is quite limited, I guess, right now. By what yeah. you can basically see the front of the boat, and that uh, a mad dwarf has just run out and hit. Can him. I um, parkour up onto this rock? It's a pretty tall rock, um, so I'll have you roll uh, with agility to see if you can get up there. Right. Okay, it's not okay. like it, it's more than thirty feet up. So right, you, you'd, okay. be, you'd be pushing it to get right up to where you can see over it. Yeah, roll with agility, right. So plus one, and that is... Oh, that's a good roll, though. Uh, that's 21 with fear. 21 with fear. You make it up absolutely no problem. Um, and then... Both of the archers who are hidden down by the barrels there see you and immediately sort of fire overwatch at you. Um, and that is a 19 on one and a 10 on the other. Uh, 10 misses, 19 hits. Things off the rock, 19 hits. Um, 19 hits you for 9 damage. Um... So that's past my major threshold. Now, if I use an armor slot, it if it hits my threshold, does it do the damage? If my major yeah. threshold is 8 and it hits 8, so yeah. if I use an armor slot, yeah, I might as well just leave it then. Right, no, so you, yeah. You'd use multiple you, armor on, you can use, yeah. No, I know, but I've only got, I've only got three. Mm. I'm you can I'd have to use... short rests. It's up to you. Two. Um, so that's two hit points um, for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll just take the two hit points. Okay. Uh, but you're up top now. Um, have you got an attack to make as part of this move of yours? Um, yes, I will. Um, oh, that's very close, though, isn't it? Balls. Um, it's very close. will put you probably about where those rocks are down below. Maybe a little bit further. Obviously, you're quite yeah. high up, so you know you're gonna have advantage if you're coming from above. Um. Anyways, far. Um. I will. What will I do? I will. I'll do. Oh, cool. I will. Um. Hmm. 
Is that a trebuchet I see on deck? <laughs> on the deck, it's not a trebuchet, no. There are um, the smouldering ruins of a catapult and a ballista. There is another catapult that looks like it is wedged in position and is probably only operable in one angle. And then at the very front is what looks to be a uh, pretty sound ballista in, in decent bal- working order. I was going to say, that ballista appears to be pointing straight at a, a, a an orc. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that. And and would that ballista be within far range of me? Um, yeah, within far, certainly. Um, in that case, uh, I'm going to use uh, my book of Tafar. Uh, magic hand you can reach out with a magical hand to anywhere within far reach of you and i'm gonna trigger that ballista okay so um roll with now what would this one be to see whether or not you uh um let me just have a look roll with instinct <clears throat> to see whether you can know how this works. Uh, and to see whether you can see if everything's in working th- order. 13 with hope. 13 with hope. Okay, since you rolled with hope, uh, I will say that it is loaded. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it's it's an easy enough mechanism to trigger. Um... Would you like to roll... I mean, technically, I suppose it'd be agility. (laughs) But um, roll with agility, and because of the proximity and the surprise, um, you can probably add four to your roll. Uh, That is... uh, 20 with fear. (laughs) Okay, I'll take a fear. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, and um, good grief. Okay, roll. Uh, there are no rules for ballistas that I've come across yet, so let's say um, roll three d ten. In fact, you know what? No, that doesn't matter. <laughs> they only have three hit points. Oh no, you're going to say fish dies. No, it does. Roll three d ten. Uh, they have three hit points, but still, you could roll less than seven and they could survive. Okay, now 3D10. Right. Damage is not a direct translation. No, I uh, keep <laughs> forgetting to no, yeah. Yeah. It's nice to do massive damage, but um, we will do, by the way, the um, double severe. So if you roll double severe, there'll be a fourth point taken off. It's an optional rule. Oh, right. Uh, oh, that's quite did cool. It, did it in the critical mm. role one shot with it, and it makes sense. Because like, if you're doing severe extreme damage, yeah, it should be reflected. And, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. In the case of these uh, snipey archers, uh, you'd be looking at uh, rolling a 14 uh, to do the double. <clears throat> oh, Ooh, I, I could get there. I could get there, not just off my <laughs> basic, but I've got stuff to. I could mm-hmm. something to add. Well, but, but I could do that as well. Uh, yeah. uh, three D ten, right? Uh, I actually I had a question about some of my stuff while I've gathered this, finding this. Twenty one. Oh no, 21. he's he's done. So I'll, I'll, I'll just <laughs> it's um the last remaining bolt in this. It um goes into the back of the Greenskin's neck, and all the last thing you see is Greenskin and Bolt disappearing out to sea. (laughs) (laughs) Arcing into the water um, with this sort of dripping trail of of green blood um, as it's completely, utterly unaware of what has just happened to it. It probably was the most peaceful way it could have died. (laughs) (laughs) Given the situation, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, given the situation and all that was going on, there was probably far worse things that could have happened to it. It was completely unaware, it was cackling away. <laughs> Power fire. Oh, gone. So, did we yeah. see this this hand go over, or did it just appear there? How did your hand work? 
Um, uh, how does my hand work? Uh, you can reach out with a magical hand. So it just so yeah, it reach out. So I'm assuming it came from me. Right. Just Having seen that, then just lean around the rock to to see you stood uh, on on this uh, position on the uh, the far rock. You're like, seem to have other combatants, Flotsam. Yo, dudes, did you see that? Ah, I totally Friendly. shot that little green dude into the sea. That was, he was awesome. Miles. <laughs> yeah, total luck, though, dude. Total luck. I had no intention of that happening. <laughs> okay, Gorbrad is my new favorite character. Uh... <laughs> um. My bros call me Brad. Did you roll with fear or with hope, by the way, on that one? That was fear, that was last fear. one. I thought it was. Great then. So uh, having done that, having seen their comrade go completely out to sea, um, the leader is going to sort of look and see what's going on and is going to activate and is also, because of his ability, going to activate to others uh, who are within range. So he is going to send these two chaps here and here to make attacks on Bring Flotsam. Uh, he is also going to... Yes. Um, um, so happening oh, already. Where that came <laughs> from, and um, <laughs> out from underneath the uh, ruined prow from a hole come, and these are going to be giant <laughs> for a second. So just bear with me a second. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. Honey, I shrunk the gobbo. Honey, I shrunk the gobbo. Oh, I moved the map as well. I said I moved the gobbo. There we go. There we go. And they're going to appear there, sort of appear. under the boat. And uh, not appear, they're going to crawl out of the boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and harass Orion. I keep wanting to say Grom. I really should have done a different template. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, the two that are now harassing Jetsam. Uh, we have... Oh, we're rolling well tonight. It's a uh, 17 and 19. Oh, yeah. That's that's well above my uh, evasion. My evasion's not great. Okay, no, good. mine's um, terrible. So they roll uh, 2d8 in order to do their damage. Um, and because okay. they're attacking you at the same time, uh, they add it all together. Uh, uh, so that's 16 damage. With resistance. With resistance is halved down to 8. Um, and then use uh, an armor slot, reducing it by another 9. <laughs> to be low zero. <laughs> Yes, ping, and ping, ping. Um, when um, an enemy within melee range uh, and I use an armor slot to reduce damage, immediately do damage to them equal to my armor value, which is nine. Nine. Oh, okay. Um, to each of them or to one of them? It's, 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 it just says uh, when hit by an enemy in melee range and I use an armor slot to reduce the damage, immediately do damage to them equal to the armor value. Okay, um, they will each take two hit points then, I would suggest, um, based on that. Um, so, okay. and you reduce that to less than zero, yeah? Yes. You do not take any stress either. <clears throat> okay. Beautiful. <laughs> um, the um, <laughs> three, <clears throat> Smart. The, th the three around Orion will um, all have goes at him as well. Um... And we'll spend a fear to activate them all um, for a group attack. Um, <clears throat> uh, they are rolling reasonably well. That's a uh, three 
a 13 and an 18. And I'm saying this like you know his stats, but I know his stats. Um, <laughs> um, so he's hit twice by them uh, for six damage, <coughs> which is just for him one hit point marked. And I'm just going to have to mark that. I'm just going to have to refresh that page actually. <clears throat> This is one thing that's very frustrating about the, the Daggerheart Nexus uh, is the it logs you out all the time if you leave the page up. <clears throat> ah. I'm so used to D&D um, Beyond just allowing us to have the tab up forever. <clears throat> and it was also my fault for not actually shutting the PC down. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So he takes a hit point of growls angrily at them as they uh, they start to swarm him. Um, right, so that is them. Now, what else have we got? Okay, so the two that fired Overwatch um, are going to do so again. <clears throat> I'll spend another action point for each of them. And they're going to fire at Gorbred again. That's a four and a 14. 14 hits. 14 hits, 2d6. Uh, did we tick your counter down, by the way, Flotsam, for doing damage? Uh, it says whenever you roll to damage. No, we didn't roll. Counter stays at four. No. Cool. I'll keep that up there. I will double check that. Yeah. Um, and I rolled three. Go, Brad. Uh, three hit points is my minor, so I will use one armor slot to take that down to two. Um, so does that mean I mark a stress? You do, you mark a stress to, uh, um, yeah. just represent the fact that you're still getting bumped and battered a bit. Yeah, no worries. Um, and <coughs> the other guy is going to move, and he's going to move down into a more well it's not going to move down actually he's going to move up here onto the prow <clears throat> for now um great okay that's uh, enemy movement well i've got an idea of what i want to do but i'm aware that nix hasn't moved yet yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm gonna hop on Lily and we're gonna sneak around down here. I'm gonna come around this rock this side and I'm gonna shoot at these little gobbles at the barrel. Mm. Okay. Uh, where's my shot bow? Right, so make your roll. I don't know what you need to make it with. Have you got any additions, proficiency, and I assume short bow is agility, but I'm not sure. Yes. So that's plus. Short bow, agility. <clears throat> so plus two, that, that is 11. <laughs> Eleven. Yeah. You, uh, was that with hope or fear? That was hope. Okay, so take a hope, but um, it uh, impacts into the corpse right in between the two of them and just misses. <clears throat> it's poor, what? slightly charred, battered corpse uh, is now <laughs> sticking out of its ass. Um, but what you do what? notice um, as you have come around that corner is that, that is not it. Um, and you see down the bottom, returned from around the cliffs, another party oh, no. of four um, <laughs> uh, who are interesting, in, interested in what's going on here, but haven't yet joined the combat. Mm. Um, so go on. How, how, um, how close can I get to those four? 
seeing because obviously I'm above her. I've just seen them. Um, you could probably get about halfway without rolling, or you can roll with agility to get, you know, and and tell me why and how. I well, yeah. I mean, uh, I've me and Nick's have been in this bar for the last you know week or so, and we've. Mm -hmm. We've kind of had a few drinks together and seeing them come round and knowing that she's only a foot tall and there's four of them, I think I'm going to be a bit protective. So I'd like to try and get within... Um, I'd like to try and get within very close range of those four. So you'd be looking for very close. You'd be looking about... Is there a button for this? Right, it's not gonna let me do that. I'm gonna get the right hook in there. There we go. You'd be looking for very close to get around there. So the the rocks on the left is that a cliff? Yeah, that's the cliff. That's what you came down. So can I sprint, <clears throat> jump off the cliff where I am, and try and do like a, a sticky tongue off that wall to get me? <laughs> within <laughs> very close okay yeah but you are rolling for that uh yeah <laughs> no that's fair enough uh, um you got an experience you want to spend a hope to use to tell me why i have easier. um i've got an experience which is a plus two which is swing when you're winning <laughs> um, that's perfect and you've just done a big shot so <laughs> I'll, I'll take that so i will spend a hope and i will do that and i'm what am i rolling with agility yeah, you've got to miss an agility roll to move yourself into position before you make your attack. Right, so that's a plus one, and then I've got swing when you're in, which is a plus two, so I'm plus three in onto this. And that is... That's 20 with fear. 20 with fear. Um, okay, take a fear. So you do make it, you do you, you draw their attention. Where do you want to land? Put yourself where you want to land. Uh, I would like <clears throat> to get right in between, right in between them, them and Nick's and in between. Yeah. And that is, that is bold, given that you've just taken two hit points. Um, okay. Um they get a one of them one of the archers takes a pot shot at you as you are scurrying across the cliff because uh, you're coming straight towards him yeah um, eight no misses ping okay uh right what do you want to do uh i would like to attack um with uh my book of typhar wild flame uh you make a spell casting roll against up to three enemies within very close range uh, a flame erupts from your hands dealing 2d6 magic damage to any that you succeed against okay very good so, um, which three do you want to so when it says make a spell casting roll is that still my two d12s or yeah. is that a d20 no right, you don't so roll d20s still... at all you're still rolling d12s uh, and all right, adding excellent. to it whatever uh, your spell suggests you do yeah now, so I shall take out the, the, the two in front yeah. and the bottom right so okay. basically the three <clears throat> closest to Nyx I got you is it um, um is it three separate attacks, just out of interest? I do roll one attack. <clears throat> uh, because it, just is... it depends. Some spellcasting rolls have a spellcasting target you must roll on your yeah, card. This says, oh, this right. says make a spellcasting roll against up to three enemies. So I'm, it no. says make a spellcasting roll. But against That's up to three. One roll. You're, you're rolling three, I think, because there's different difficulty values to roll against there. Um, right. So it's up to three enemies means you roll against each enemy up to three. Right. Three. Okay. So I'm making say. one for each of them. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So spellcasting roll is a plus two. So for the two at the front, uh, so, the first of them. So, so front left first of all uh, is a critical two twos. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Excellent. <clears throat> uh, um, front front right. Shall I do all the 
spells no, first no, no, and then do damage. You've done a critical, let's do the damage on the critical first. Uh, so take a hope, clear a stress. Um, and okay. if I remember stress. this rightly, and if the viewers will probably correct me if I am wrong, um, I think you do the maximum possible damage plus your dice roll. So you say it's oh, two do you? Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, so I get 12. twelve. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. So it's severe. It's not gone over. It's double. So you do three, and this is the one closest to the cliff. Uh, mm -hmm. You do three, two. <clears throat> God, I fucking uh, love combat in Daggerheart. <laughs> this is <laughs> mint. Do you want to roll the uh, next swordsman? Yes. Ooh, it's a fucking critical two sevens. Oh, Jesus Christ, clear it. Get another <laughs> stress bit. Take another hope. Roll another 2d6 plus 12. I've got no room for any more hope. I've already got all five. <laughs> well, um, then you're maxed out. Spend them. <laughs> uh, so that is... Uh, 22. 22. Again, only three. But, I mean, that's pretty good. Um, right, roll against one of the archers. Left or right? Take your pick. Uh, right, so the one near the sea. Okay. And that isn't a critical. That is... Uh, 16 with hope. 16 with hope. Okay, you do hit. Roll 2d6. Uh, only four. Only four, okay. And two that's... twos, is that a critical? Uh, uh. No, <laughs> there are enough criticals in this game already. Um, that, that deals two hit points damage to that one. <clears throat> Lightly armoured bastards that they are. Um, okay, that was beautifully done. Um, I need to put an action point back on the tracker for your craziness. Okay, um, good. Right, uh, does anyone else want to do anything? Because you've been rolling with hope all this time. <clears throat> uh, yes, well... Um... Blotsam, if I remember, was on the ground, as in fell yeah, down. Yeah, I am now, you, yeah, I fell you, back to the ground. laying down. Well, uh, not in, not laying down, I, I, I just dropped to my ah, feet. Right. Yeah. right, fair enough. Well, uh, what I was proposing I do was um, I grab you and swing you at oh, <laughs> these nice. other two um, to spend a hope to tag team um, yeah. these two. Um, yes. yeah. So, so if you swing your weapon as I'm swinging you as a weapon, um, <laughs> I like the sound of this. To hopefully try and hit both if we can. Mm. Absolutely. Get extra momentum round if uh, GM allows. Yeah, absolutely. You both roll Sweet. attacks. So I will spend a hope to initiate that. Do you each spend a hope? Or is it just one of you? Can yes, it says each spend a hope. So yeah, it's you have to okay. Too. Yeah, that's fine. I have, uh, I'm racking up. I was like, I'm looking at my things like, what do I spend the hope on? Yeah, uh, I think at level one, there's fewer things. As you level up, you'll have plenty mm. of opportunities to spend your hope. Um, um, okay. I, I rolled a, a 19 with hope. Okay, so you hit. What about you, uh, Flotsam? Uh, I've rolled. Oh, it is a. 18 with hope. 18, okay. Exceptional work, yeah. both of you. Um, <clears throat> right, yeah, two hits. Uh, both roll damage. Now, this is only... It should only be against one of them, but because of the way you're swinging him, um, I'll say you can choose whether to mm. do all the damage to one or whether to roll damage, add it together, and then split it to see half to each. I'd say split it. Yeah. So, could I... Could I spend a hope as well and make it a forceful push? I've just found something that I can spend hope on. I've got forceful push as well, and I was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why? Um, could we both do that? <laughs> um, Does that move them yeah, back? you can. Yeah, you can spend hope to yeah. make them temporarily vulnerable on a successful melee attack. On a success with hope, you add an extra 1d6. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So we've both got that. So we both yeah. had a 1d6. And I'm unstoppable, which adds another d6 to it. Nice. Okay, there might be yeah. some uh, super dead uh, greenskins here. That's super <laughs> so uh, d8 plus 2d6. Did I roll that? Yes, I did. 13 damage from me. 
and Tom's. I, I didn't dice. roll very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did you roll? I did not roll very well. Um, 1d8 plus 2d6 is 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 plus 13, 21, divided by 2, 11. 11 to each, I will say. Um, which and is... I will mark down my unstoppable counter. Because I've rolled yes, damage. Definitely. Um, okay, so they each take uh, oh, two hit point damage. Um, and they get moved as well, do they? They get moved, what, back? Is it out to uh, from melee? It's out, of, it's out, of, uh, melee. out of melee. Yeah. Out yeah. Of melee. Okay, oh, so and they're, they're, they're vulnerable as well. For the next uh, attack. It, yeah, I think it says. It says to make them yeah. temporarily vulnerable. Make them they're temporary both looking yeah. pretty rough now. Um, so yeah, but as it stands, uh, there's no I I would assume we swapped places. <laughs> yes. You are now in front of me. <laughs> as I've been swung sure like a sword. <laughs> more, and you, you've stayed where you are, and you've just swung him round and dropped him in front of you. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have two two points on the action tracker for your combo move. I think um, you both yeah. rolled with hope, didn't you, for those attacks? Yes. yes. Okay, so it's still the tick is with you guys. Um, can I can I just cast a quick spell? Um, is that all right? You've got a good Go for purpose it. for doing it, yeah. If it fits. Um, yeah. So after coming in and setting fire to these dudes, um, I would like to. Um, so I've got a <laughs> I've got a scepter as well as my bow staff, right. which is. A saxophone, basically. Um, so it is a magical weapon that happens to be a saxophone, which works as a scepter, but is also a bong. Um, <laughs> so I would like to whip it over my shoulder, um, strike a match off my head, take a big lug, and then breathe out, and cast um, Mysterious Mist. Uh, spend a hope to cast a temporary thick fog that encircles a stationary area up to very close of your current location. Everyone within is hidden to anybody outside the fog. So I will spend a hope and I will basically just blow a massive cloud of smoke around myself um, to hide myself from these four orcs mm -hmm. that I've just attacked. Now, I'm just quickly trying to look uh, at... Because you basically your bow staff is two-handed and I imagine your scepter is at least one, well, one-handed or two, I don't know. But I'm just trying to look at the rules for swapping from a two-handed. Ah, oh, yes. Because you're using them both. Oh, you like, might. You can't have that one equipped because you've got no. both hands on your staff. So no, I can't. You, ha I would have to unequip one and equip another. Which, I yeah, no, I think you're think, right. I think there is a special rule for that. I think for now we'll just say that's your action to swap it this turn. But if you want to make that action, you can also move. Or um. If you're attacking, I'd say do it with disadvantage, but because you're spellcasting, it's a bit different. You need to get centred. You've got to quickly take that out, do something with this, and then make smoke. I'm not sure you're going to yeah. have time. So. Um, no, that is a fair point. No, do you know what? Forget it. I won't do it at all. No. You don't want to swap? Yeah. Okay. No, let's, we'll look into that because I think uh, that well, might be a bit of a cheat. On. Hang on, wait a second, I think I found it. If you want to switch to different weapon or armor than you currently have active while in danger under pressure, mark one stress per piece of equipment you'd like to swap. There you oh, go. Right. Be because you can't equip it, you're marking a stress. So, uh, since you're Mr. Critical, I don't know how many stress you've got, but it can't be many. Uh, I've got five, and, and I've just wiped one, so <laughs> I've just got one again. Yeah, all right, then, yeah, in that case, it's as simple as marking a stress to swap that over, because you, you can't just one in each hand sort of thing right okay so can i can i do that and cast yeah. the spell yeah you can yeah. just mark a stress so i knew yeah, there was so something I'll... i just wasn't sure what the ruling was. yeah no that's fine i'll take the stress so i'll mark a stress and i will um blow take a big old blast on my saxophone bong and disappear into a purple haze <laughs> of course it's a purple haze um <laughs> yeah Right, let me just see what we can do for you here. He wanted uh, you to refer to it as a saxabong. A saxabong, yes. Saxabong. Yes, it is now. How, well, it's how, a what's, what's the range of your purple haze? Uh, very close range, so I'm just casting it on myself, basically. Everyone within is hidden to everybody outside. 
Hang on then. So hopefully it will disrupt line there of sight go. to Nyx as well for at least two of them. Nice. It'll, uh, providing, yeah, if they don't move. but So they know you're there, they just can't see you very well. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you see okay in there, or is it a case of you're also hidden in the haze? Well, it doesn't say. It just says everyone within is hidden to okay, anybody so outside the hidden. fog. Okay, so if they entered it, they'd be hidden too, and it'd be a so, confusing melody. Yeah, so we'd, cool. we'd all be blind. Excellent. Right, so that's you. I'll have your action. I think I think for me to be able to attack, I'd need to move out of the cloud of smoke. But for the time being, if, if anybody tries no, to attack I'd, me... I'm not so sure about that, to be honest. There's certain rules I've seen that uh, uh, certainly allow you to be hidden in attack and smoke bombs and yeah. stuff. So, uh, Anyway, cool. Uh, it's still with you guys. Nyx? I'm going to go to Lily it? and go, go hunt. And I'm going to send her off to the two... Goblins at the ship. The two here. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, great. Yeah. She get? Yeah. We've worked on her stats, haven't we? So you know what she's rolling. Over there. Uh... She's what? Well, she's actually a playable character. Your tiger. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Ranger with the <laughs> um, the pet, the, the beast thing. The beast. I'll thing. tell you. Awesome. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what they have got right in this game is the fact that as from level one you feel like a fucking hero. Yeah. 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 Level one in D and D, you're like, I can't do anything. You're no. like, you, you are feeble. <laughs> yes. And honestly, building this encounter, I was so worried about going completely over the top, and I'm still thinking I've not gone far enough. <laughs> um, no. Cool. So, you've yeah. gone to attack. Uh, so, um, how does your tiger attack? And uh, you'll forgive me, I don't know what your tiger rolls to attack with, because yeah, we, oh, we only made it recently. Yeah. Uh, so, she's going to use strike. Mm -hmm. And that's a 1d4. There it is. Oh, I'm going to have to let the puppy out before it shits on the floor. We should, said she was adolescent, didn't we? Not not. Yeah. Cool. So in not. that better dice, so it was D6, I think. Oh, is it D6? Yes. Yeah. I said we'd do, depending on how old the tiger was, it'd be D4, D6, yeah. or D8. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So, uh, so roll, add any of the bonuses she gets. <clears throat> I don't think it's showing me all the things, but eh, it does. It's like that. So. Does she do the two D12s as well? The two D12s? Like... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, to roll to hit. Yeah, yeah. she uses, yeah, every, every player uh, interaction uses those. That's uh, critical freeze. Critical threes, excellent. Yay. Take a hope, clear of stress. <laughs> and she she does uh, six plus d six damage to uh, that? that particular gobbo. Uh, what is that? That's a f that's a six. It's Twelve damage. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is a uh, one dead goblin. That's a big old swiperoony. One very satisfied tiger. Uh... <clears throat> nice. So does that clip? Does your tiger's attacks clear your stress, which is awesome uh, well uh, oh no actually no here's the point no it doesn't clear your stress the tiger the tiger, tiger has uh, uh, tiger doesn't have hit points tiger has stress and tiger vanishes when stressed mm. uh, oh, and right. turns ah, up later okay. feeling less cool. stressed so it clears its own stress that's cool yeah. so i miss that did the t tiger does the tiger have fear and hope dice as well uh yes and uh but no hit points all right did it Just did it roll with fear or hope that time it, it rolled with hope it, all right, it critted. Um, yeah, yeah. What all um, Jetson wants to do is take two big strides over towards Orion and just uppercut the uh, the first uh, orc, which is in front of him. That one there. That one okay. there. With his mace, just two right. big strides down the beach. And... 
As you as you're walking up and looking to do it, Orion, however, goes, just leave these to me, lad. Um and with his gauntlets he sort of he um spins and again it's not so much an uppercut, but he slams them together in front of them and rolls No, I get to roll fear and hope this time. Um Oh it's <laughs> crit tonight. <laughs> crit, with, nice. crit with eights. Um, so he um, slams them together just in front of that one um, and maxes the damage and then rolls. He is got um, D10 plus two. Um, so, Jesus. Okay, so that's uh, 16 damage. Uh and the force wave that comes out of it just hits all three of them and one after the other just throws them to the floor as little tattered rags. Um, nice. And... Um, in, in that case of him, because uh, Jetsam still took the two strides across the beach to do it and was about to swing and when that happened, because yeah. then can he then still do the uppercut swing with his mace but use the momentum with a jump to... Leap, try and leap up onto deck. Um, I'd say with the other one right there, he'd have to roll agility to have a go at it. Okay. Uh, because he's oh, right. Nothing, must do it. There's a yeah. gap there. So yeah, roll with. I'd say disadvantage as well. So Is take that a D six from it. D six from it. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Agility it's, it's plus one. Which not, is right. It's a big way up still, even though it's in the ground. It's still, you know, yeah. 20 feet up. I mean, or ships are hefty. In yeah, exactly. Deep, um, okay. Not spectacular. Um, uh, what's that? Oh, it's not too bad. Uh, 15 with fear. Okay, so you don't make it up, but you are hanging by one arm from the railing. Uh, okay. Unable to make, unable to make your attack now. But next turn, you'd be able to get up. Yeah, I'll be able to pull myself uh, up next time. That's fine. In response, um, the uh, leader uh, sees you come in there, and he shouts. Get him! But I'll move myself up. Um, yeah, and, and the one that is right here um, swings. And in fact, he'll join in the fight. Um, and this guy here will come and attack Flotsam. Because when I activate the commander, I get to activate uh, two others uh, within range as well, within close range. Um, nice. Yeah, it's handy that. So, the two of them are going to attack against you. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just find the commander's stats. I'm on the wrong. There we go. Um, right, so he is rolling a 14 to hit you. Yeah, it definitely hits. Yes, oh, and so who are you swinging against? Uh, against uh, this. So this is against um, Jetson. Flotsam will get it later. Oh, right. It? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, hits and the other guy uh, rolls a one uh, and misses. Misses. Um, so we are doing. Hang on a second. Doing D8 plus two. So we're doing nine damage to you. Halved five. Halved um, to five. Yeah. Um, then. Um, that's fine. I'll, I'll, that's, that's under my minor threshold, so I'll just mark a stress. Mark another stress. Okay. You are tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it sort of clinks off your armor and the other guy mm. um misses and thuds next to your hand on the desk you just hear the uh, uh commander shout what are you doing down there get out come on help us <coughs> and you hear movement but you don't know what's going on mm. um so the other guy who is uh, gonna go after flotsam 
It rolls a 12. Alright. It hits. And what's he rolling? He's rolling 2d8. Yeah, um, how exciting. At six. Six. Yeah. I will... Um, I'll mark an armor slot to reduce it by nine. <laughs> Takes a stress. Jesus Christ, you two. Um, tank boys. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll mark that. So I will then activate the um, spending points to activate the two that have just. In fact, I'm going to spend three points. And I'm going to activate the uh, two that have been activated by the commander on their own terms. So the one's going to swing again from above you. Um, and that's the next one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ooh. a nat 20, which I don't know what... I don't think we have crits for me, but I'm happy to roll a nat 20. Uh, it feels <laughs> good. Instinctively very nice. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, but now, because he's above you, his standard 2d8 physical becomes 3d10. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, that's handy. One, two, three. Uh, height advantage gives... Uh, no, this is special uh, special rule. Uh, when I Ooh. when I hit and I'm from above, the swordsmen do three d ten damage rather than their standard two d eight. Nice. Um, that is much better. That is da, 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 ten seven four twenty one. Twenty one halved. Uh, yes, halved. So eleven. <clears throat> um, I will mark an armor slot. How many armor slots have you marked now? Is that two? That's my second. Oh, one to go. Uh, reduce to nine. Through. <laughs> and take a stress. Um, and take a stress, but then they also take um, nine damage <laughs> from my vengeance <laughs> class. Yes, they do. Right, hang on a second then. Uh, so which one is he? He's the guy who's not been in combat yet. Uh, nine means he takes two hit points. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, <laughs> right, the, the two boys back on the ground are going to both roll after Flotsam. That is a, a 10 and a 13. Yeah, they both hit. Both hit, excellent. They're both doing 2d8. Um, so, ooh, nice. 15, 21, 24 points of damage. <clears throat> and let's see. 24. So, if I spend an armor, reduce it by 9 to 15, and then I'll use my other um, prayer dice to reduce it by a further 2. Taking it from a severe to a major. Hey, uh, it takes two, two, two hit points. <clears throat> damage. Finally done some good damage. <laughs> <clears throat> um, great. And then the um, the archer here, who's suddenly pretty terrified that his mate's just been savaged by a tiger, is going to have a shot at it. Um, what's the evasion on your tiger? Has it got its own value? Ten. Ten, all right, okay. Just good to know. Uh, well, it's a 14. Um, so that's 2d6, so that's three. So I assume that's the stress and the tiger vanishes. Yeah. <clears throat> so for now, at least. It doesn't mean the tiger's dead, followers. Um, it just means that the tiger is um, a little bit stressed at the situation and will skulk back later on. But for now... Tiger has left the battlefield. Um, so now we've got a very small target over there. <laughs> um, oh, that is everything that your opponents are going to do. Well, I imagine that I would be the slowest to react given the situation that I'm in. Yeah, uh, holding on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I would uh, just try and swing my. Uh, oh, I'll maybe I'll mark a stress to um, activate my flight, my wings again, and I'll fly up just to try and get out of range of these dudes. So I'll go up in the air, and then I will. Um, uh, 
I'll throw my weapon at the main guy. I'll say on this just, ship. just quickly, since you're going to be flying literally out from in front of them, just roll with agility for me. Oh. Just to see as you go God. up whether or not you're going to... They're going to have time to swing back at you. Uh, that is a... What, six minus... Ten, eight with hope. Uh, one of them's going to get a swing, but take a hope. Uh... Uh, but it's only a five. Uh, five is my evasion. Oh, okay, that'll do. Uh, now he's not. Oh no, it's you. not. No? no, it's not. Seven's my evasion because I'm flying. I get plus well, two. You're about to fly. You will. Well, I've activated it. No, haven't I? Oh, I so when it says when you, when you, oh, when okay. you uh, to take flight. And then uh, while flying, your evasion score increases. I, I think, think that you will only be flying once you clear them. I think it's that's fair enough. Until so, I'm, I'm going to say it hits you, um, but eight in total. Uh, I use my final arm slot and then reduce it to zero. That's okay. how you get it. No stress. And now you are happy and flying and up. Uh, yeah. So then I will, <coughs> I guess. How high is this pillar behind me? Uh, they're both probably rocks, are probably up to sixty foot at the highest, but they're sort of stepped, so you can have right, stand so on the I... pinnacle if you want, or you can go sort no, of twenty, no. thirty. Um... Yeah, I'm just gonna go twenty or thirty so that I'm like, I don't know, yeah, so that I have something that I can Sorry. maybe put my foot on in case I lose my wings, um, and then I'll I'll throw. I'll throw my sword at the, uh, what I think is the main guy. He's got a helmet on. Yeah. I was going to say, that's what my, was my thinking. He's wearing armour, he's got, he's got a helmet. He must be in <laughs> So, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, throw my weapon at him. Uh, which is a, what's that, what? Four, ain't it? With hope. Oh, hang on a yeah. second. Uh, oh, yeah, you just hit him. Um, and I will... Uh, now, it, this was a question. So, because it is a melee weapon, but I'm using it like a spirit weapon, my forceful push, can I use that on it? No. No. no okay. I think it's got to be in your hand to do a forceful push, I think. I think... It's, oh, it's right, okay. projectile at this point. It's not doing the push. That's it. You're That's doing it. the push. That's a non-bow then. I yeah. didn't. Read yeah, it, it makes sense because the other forceful pushes. Um, it's a, a successful melee attack. I think it's thrown. Yeah. It seems to be melee. I think. Yeah. yeah. In melee to do it. Yeah. You're That's repurposing fine. the um, sword for something else. <clears throat> it's a learning. Okay. Curve. So just damage then. Uh, yeah, which is a nine plus two, so eleven. Eleven. Oh, very good. Um, he takes he takes severe damage. Um, nice. One, two, three. But he's still standing, and he looks pissed off. Um. <clears throat> right, you rolled uh, with hope, didn't you? I did. Yes. Yeah. Keep it coming. Right, these four in front of me, are they all still standing? Um, yes, actually. Let me just change pages. Yep, they're all still standing. One of them hasn't been touched. Um, two of them have each lost three, and one of the archers has lost two. And they know that I'm within this cloud of smoke. They, they, well, unless you've run out the back of it, they know that you were in the cloud of smoke. Okay, so can I... Jump towards the cliff, shout something, and then hop off the cliff into the sea. So sort of <laughs> make them think, make them think that I'm at the cliff. Like jump against uh, the wall and jump back into the sea. I'm gonna say you can certainly try. Um, make a roll, two rolls, if you will. Uh, right. First, make a roll with presence to see whether you can deceive them, and then second, make a roll with agility to see whether you can make the jump. Okay, so the roll with presence. Um, 
I've got a plus two on presence. As I jump towards the wall... Mm -hmm. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. Don't forget you, you've got plenty of hopes or experiences or whatever you want to spend to... No, I'm just... I've got... Flavor. Heart of the heart of the poet. When speaking to a person you're trying to impress, persuade, or offend, use at least three rhyming words to add one d four to the action roll. So, Persuad as I yeah, jump, you are persuading them of where you are. So as I jump towards the wall, better be good words though. You don't get it. <laughs> Quickly think of rhyming words. <laughs> as I jump towards the wall, I'm gonna shout. I know it's not easy being green, but dudes, you guys are really mean. So while it seems that I'm not seen, I'm gonna have to intervene. <laughs> okay, take your dice. Well nice. played. Uh, and a D4. So that is 14 with hope. Yeah, you're fine. They, they, as far as they're concerned, that's what you've done. Uh, but now you've got to make the jump to convince them that you're elsewhere. Okay, so now I'm going to try and jump into the sea. So what's that, agility? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. As I'm leaping into the sea, can I use my experience surfs up to add one? Absolutely. Spend a hope to do it, though. Yeah, spend a hope. And that is... <laughs> That's only eight with hope. <sighs> Sploosh. Rollies. <laughs> and there's a slightly bigger splash, but none of them seem to look. Yes! <laughs> and I am... Um, I'm an amphibian, so I yeah. can breathe underwater. So as soon as I hit the water, I'm going to dive down under and be submerged. I'll tell you this now. The water is as clear and beautiful as it looks on that map. Oh, shit. Right. It's submerged all you like. Yeah, you, you be underwater, that's fine, and they will get disadvantage, but they aren't gonna you aren't gonna be able to hide very easily. Right, okay. Well, you, you can keep trying, but um yeah, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful clear water in this beach. Unspoilt. You'd be delighted if you went on holiday there. Um right, cool. Um it's still with you, guys. Uh who wants to do something? I I'm going to mark a stress and take flight. And uh, where was it? There is. Stressful this flying log. Well, I mean, it is. Fly over a little bit closer to the goblin, like, not my lily! Glad I've got wings. Ah, yes. Tens! Tens? tens. Oh, crit yeah. tens. tens. Okay, tens. nice. Uh, there it is. Right, roll your damage. Uh, what was it again? You're rolling. Is it 2d6? Uh, Yes. Don't roll any further, you've killed him. What's my dice? You can roll him if you want to roll him and find out what you did. <laughs> I wanna. You do not need to. Um... Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Plump. Gone. Uh, things are looking a little bit more favourable. I know it's there's still a lot out there, but there's a lot of them that are walking wounded. Um, right, it's still with you guys. Um, right, at which point then it comes round to me because everybody else is um, gone. So I will then just one um, just pull myself up up to the deck, and then to make room, I'll just wallop the uh, the unarmored one in the face with my mace to push, try and push back. Make as space you for me to land get in. onto the deck. I'm going to spend a fear to swipe at you as you get up first. But uh, I'm going to roll a 13 to hit you. It hits. Excellent. 3d10 because you're still below me. Uh, Would I be? Oh, <laughs> uh, 18. 18. Um. 
Halved. Halved, mm-hmm. nine. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll take that one point of damage. <laughs> Ding! Ah, does it still hurt me? <laughs> uh, no, it's only when I use an armor slot. Oh, uh, that it hurts okay, cool. you. <laughs> it was just a mistake before. <laughs> <laughs> right, you uh, now yeah. up. Yes, and then uh, go to wallop the, the unarmored one in the face with the mace. Face with the mace. That's how you do rhyming, Gorbrad. Face with the mace. <laughs> <laughs> I'd need a third one. Um, Which one are you walloping? The, uh, just the unarmored one? The unarmored one. I thought it was crits for a moment, but one's a nine and one's a six. Um, so that is, what, uh, 15 with hope. 15 with hope. That hits. Wait. Uh, so that's 1d8 plus 1d6 and an... 1d6 for the forceful push, uh, and another 1d6 for the unstoppable. This is sounding pretty uh, painful. Yeah, hopefully. Um, So that will be... 13 damage. 13, he's still standing. Uh, But he's pushed back out of melee. One below is severe threshold. Um, and I tick down my unstoppable. You do? Is that down to two now? It is. Yeah. And then I jump onto deck where he once stood. Excellent. I am going to spend another fear to uh, have this guy take a step back and throw his javelin at you. Mm. Um, looking a little bit nervous now you've taken the bridge um, and he's going to throw his javelin Ugh, it's only a oh hang on a minute uh, it's an 8 that does hit oh lovely um, my evasion's only 5 fair enough <laughs> um, it's uh, a paltry 2 damage oh well, that's, that's a stress <laughs> mark a stress there you go um and Buddy's like, come on, get up, get up. Um, uh, because he's, you know, at this point just super pissed off. Um, and then coming out from underneath the other front of the ship here, you see three more That are just slowly... uh, emerging from below decks. Yeah, emerging from below decks, um, and are, are coming to try and turn the tide. Oh, a we've bit got more. proper swarm, didn't we? Yeah. Mm. Right. Honestly, well, like literally, you you were the only like th- four or five people still on the boat at this point. It had been going on for some time. Um, right. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's my turn done. Whoever else wants I'll... to jump in, because I was still with hope. Mm-hmm. I'll. Uh... Sorry, uh, rolling with sit- hope means I got a hope token back, didn't Each it? time you roll yeah. with hope, you add one to your hope. You can only carry five hope at one time. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Can I um, carry on going up to the... Well, would I still be in range of throwing my sword if I went to the top of the plinth? What's the uh, rules on your sword? It's... Um... It's like... Treat as though it... Is a weapon with close range. Then up to uh, no, if you're at the top, you'd be out of range. You, you can fly above. Right. I mean, you are flying. This can be one fluid motion. You can fly thirty, throw it, retrieve it, and carry on. You don't have to end your move once you've attacked. Yeah. You know. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, I if will. If you want to go uh, to the top, do it as on your way. No, I just no. I think maybe I'll fly across. Yeah. Here. And be like hovering and then throw my weapon down at the dude as I'm flying across. Like the main guy, I think. Mm-hmm. It it's seems the main to be guy the one. on the deck. Oh, yeah. nice. Seems, I think he seems to be the one to go for. Uh, go on then. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that is a. Mm, what's that? Nine plus six. So only 11, but with hope. Misses, take a hope. Sword just 
dodges to the side of it and it spins off and comes back up and all the way around and you just back I am um, I'm full of hope. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what. There's not a lot I got with to hope. spend it on. There's nothing I can use it I for. Think, can you spend, Tom? You've just read this. Is, can you spend it to give yourself advantage Good. and to help your opponent, to help your allies um, and give them advantage and stuff? Yeah, you can ah. help an, an ally making an action um, where you can feasibly aid them. Um, yeah, but you have to describe how you're doing it. Um, and they roll an extra d6 advantage die. Excellent. Oh, if Thank I spend you. help to help them. Yeah. Okay. Well, as you've flown yeah. up this way, then uh, Orion's like, oh, I guess these are mine. And he, he runs in behind this one. And um, duality dice. Hey! He hits with fear. It's my turn. Um, but he does hit, which is important. Where's D10? Um, and, and he comes in and he just sort of plants his feet and you watch little gusts come to the side and he sort of just goes into its back, but he goes into the back with such force that it lifts. You don't even see the gauntlet connect. It's sort of just before he gets it, it's like the air, the, the air forms like a hard shell and it just goes straight into his back and splinters his back. Um, and that is going to do... Oh, yeah, it's a um, middle damage major, is it? Major, yes. Um, and one of them, he just crumples. Nice. Um, but it is roll with fear. So I will take a fear and spend some action points. Of which there were quite a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, I've yeah. got uh, several racked up here. It's lovely. Um, right, so these guys here um, are looking over there. So he's going to walk in and investigate, and that's going to be his activation. Oh, he's not here. Look, you what? You what? And he looks around. I was like, all right, what's this over here? What's this? Yep, and he spots you and points you out to his two mates. Um, who ready arrows, uh, but you are underwater, so it will be with disadvantage. Uh, so that is a seven and a five. Nope. No phenomenon. Ah, ah. Oh, agile bastard. Um, ten. I've got ten. That's gone. Um, I might be a little also. frog. And I'm so on he, much armor, but I'm fucking... I'm a dodgy little prick. He, he's going to splash in there. And after he's gone in there is his movement. He's going to pop out the other side up here. Looking about... Oh, finding out what's going on. Um... <clears throat> So then, up here, these three are going to swarm you up here. Actually, <laughs> hmm. Um, this one is not going to. This one has noticed that the catapult is facing exactly at the fairy. Uh, oh no. <laughs> and is just going to push the button. Uh, now, it's not going to be easy. Um, what's your evasion? Uh, I've got a plus two now to oh. fly, and so it's 12. 12, okay. And I'm going to say it's at disadvantage um, because it's really no idea. It's just going to ding. Um, no, no, that's a three. <laughs> I only rolled an eight. Took, took five off that. Uh, and the projectile just smashes into the cliffs by you and uh, rains a bit down. Um, but the other two are going to roll an attack on Jetsam. Uh, 12 and 10. Hang on a second. No, it's not 12 and 10. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> da, 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 eight and ten. Well, they still both hit. No, both hit. Okay. Um, 
So they each just do three damage. So it's six damage total. A six damage total? Well, that yeah. is uh, one hit point. Woohoo! Oh. What, what does your shield do, Tom? Does your shield do anything? It, it gives me extra um, armor value. <coughs> oh, all right. But his armor value is insane. Is it nine yeah. or something? Yeah. Nine, yeah. <laughs> um, right, I think so that's what then. mine is, actually. But you've got heavier armor than that. Yeah. 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 Shock another one up. So I need a shield. This guy is looking <laughs> pretty overwhelmed right now. He doesn't want to face this guy and is going to... Hang on, let's have a look. Yeah, I can probably make that. He's going to run no, over know. here. Um, before you get... How high are you flying, actually? Ten feet. Ten feet. Now, it's not going to be able to reach you at ten feet. It's going to stay and reluctantly fight. <laughs> it did consider it. Um, <laughs> that's natural one. <laughs> Just... <laughs> And he swings and Orion just gets his gauntlets and goes and just holds them apart like that and he just can't get through this barrier of air that he's manipulating. Um, so he's frustratedly like his sword fucking stuck and can't pull it out. Um, right. So he is going to uh, um, throw his javelin at um, Jetson and retreat. Uh, natural 20! At 24. <coughs> 24? Uh, yeah, that's what. Not, not just a hit. No, just a hit. No. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's no, a lot it, of damage. Uh, three damage, half to two. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, mark I'll, stress. But I don't, have any, I don't have any more stress. That goes on to hit points, yes. It marks a hit point, yeah. How are you looking for hit points? Just out oh, of curiosity. I'm, I'm three out of six. Okay, better than I expected. Um, so he's then going to retreat across sort of here. So it's a more secure location. Um, shouting, get them! Uh, but because he activated, this guy also activates under the same point. And we'll have a go at you. And that is a 13. That hits. Excellent. Uh, ten, half to five. Uh, I will mark another armor slot Ooh. Um, to reduce that by nine. Okay, and no then he see. also and he also takes nine damage in return. And somehow clanging onto you, the vibration just <laughs> runs through him, and it's like it accidentally snaps his neck, and he just falls dead to the ground. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was just always thought a bit more of a uh, kind of a. Using my shield just to parry back and just yeah. wallop him one. As in a, fairness, a, this is entirely on how you do it. I'm just uh, jumping the gun there. You've got. I like the out. fact that you hit the the perfect resonance of a goblin and he exploded. That is uh, the green skin's turn. Huzzah! Um, is anyone else eager? Oh, can I? Can uh, I? Um, I was, was going to do something to help you. Um, can I take a stress? Uh, I'm just going to take a stress and switch back to my bow staff. Um, yeah, yeah. If anyone else wants to jump in now, just so I've done it because I keep forgetting. How long does your purple haze last? Never used to last. Uh, it does. Me. It does. It doesn't say. Um, I think these are no. See, these are obviously little things that they're going to have to clean up yeah. because. Um, it, it the wording is literally spend a hope to cast a temporary thick fog that encircles a stationary area up to very close range of your current location everyone within is hidden from everybody outside so i imagine that when it says temporary at some point they're gonna similar to the close yeah. range very close range there's gonna be <clears throat> temporary long yeah. Yeah. and roll, they're gonna roll a d6 for me on a on a four plus it stays uh, three. No, there you go. Um, I didn't want it anyway. No, no that's all right then. We're both happy. Um, could, there you go. Question: Can can flotsam clear stress? I can. Yes, I was about to come down and do that. <laughs> so I will. Uh, I, I will come down <laughs> and stress. I'll, stress, I'll float down with my insect wings and just put my hand on Mr. Jetsam's shoulder and be like, Mr. Jetsam, don't worry, we've got this! 
And I'll use my sparing touch and heal you of two stress points. Beautiful. Uh, and then <laughs> I, if I can, I would, uh, I'd maybe take, uh, throw, I'll throw my spiritual weapon and mark a stress on myself to <laughs> double it up on these two goblins. Come on then. Uh, uh yeah, so roll, roll against the first goblin first. Uh oh, that's a uh, twenty-two with hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Um... <laughs> that's, that's the highest I've rolled. A Twelve and an eight. Excellent. Um, no surprises that you hit. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So roll, uh, roll damage on him. Uh, is nine plus two eleven. You kill them both. Kill them uh, both. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. They're minions, and so for every three damage beho- before above the first, they only have one hit point each. For every three damage above the first, you do, yeah. uh, you then do one hit point to another minion within melee range. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, yeah. So did not notice this. Turn up this and went, swipe so you don't have to spend your stress, basically. Ah, um, yeah. Lovely, Jubbly. I shall knock that back. Uh. And I'll Amazing. pat Jetsam on the chest and say, I told you, we've got this! <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Agreements! <laughs> and then, um, at which point then, I'd, I'd like to then... I've, he's now cleared the way in front of us uh, to be able to then charge forward and jump over down onto the next deck and hopefully make it to the boss. Uh, if I can make that. Can I, can I you'd... slap... Slap his metal ass and spend the hope to give him advantage on whatever he wants to do. <laughs> I don't know. Does um, does your metal ass being slapped give you that kind of feeling? Uh, yeah, he feels emotions. Yeah, just as much as uh, anyone yeah, else. But, but is, that, is that a positive emotion? Is it is it something you're, you're uh, yeah, into? Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, we don't know much about you two yet. So um, okay, but, <laughs> I, I just I've witnessed people doing it on the boat and thought, yeah, this is the time. <laughs> 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 Because there is a catapult um, and some smoke coming off oh, the thing, and because there's mm. a gobbo at the bottom of the stairs, just roll with agility to see if you can make the jump. Okay. Uh, agility. Okay. It's um, 18 with fear. 18, well, I oh. enjoy that fear. You do make the jump. Um, but he will take a swing at you on the way past. Uh, Eleven? No, nine. Sorry. Nine. What? That hits. Okay. Uh, three damage from the minion. Uh, as you sort of oh, not quite high enough up to okay. avoid his club grazing your shoe. That's a, that's a stress. That's a stress. There you go. There uh, you see. You don't get to keep those stress away. Not on my watch. Uh, you <laughs> land there though. Uh, so you make the jump, but because you roll with fear, you're not going to get to attack. It's my turn. All right. So it immediately uh, ends what I was doing. Uh, only if I say it does, but because you got hit and because you gave me a fear that I want to spend, I'm going to spend it right now. All right, um, fair enough. Uh, but in fairness, uh, that is a 14 from the guy you've just landed in front. A 14 to yeah. hit. Excellent. <coughs> uh, he does uh, 7 plus 2, 8 damage, 9 damage, halved, 5. Um, five. Um, fair enough. That's uh, a stress. Excellent. Uh, because he activated the uh, minion. That's them two stresses. Is within range <laughs> as activated. Um, it's and this is gonna uh, run up behind you and take a swing. Uh, Eleven hits. He does three halved to two. My brain um, does not like saying that. Fair enough. <laughs> Does that three make mathematical sense? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I was trying to think, is it worth using my last armor slot? Yeah. Um, nah, so I'll, I'll just take right. the one hit point. Cool. Um, I've got one action point left to spend. And... Uh, so... 
Oh, so I'm looking on the wrong... I'm trying to move the uh, uh, wrong browser window. There we go. Right, now I can join in. Um, these guys are going to start moving up here and it's going to shoot at Gobrad again with disadvantage. Uh, that's better. That's a uh, 13 with disadvantage. Yep, that hits. That hits. Okay, 2d6. Uh, ooh, 11. Uh, no, it's not worth taking that down. So, yes, that's a major. So, that's two. How are you looking? Two HP. I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, You're I'm always right. going to say that. You're a chill, that dude. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um, turn passes back to you guys. Yeah, okay, so in in retaliation to that then, um, the two arrows are going to fly into the water. I'm going to... The the guy, the, the, the orc that's closest to me, uh, all he's going to see is a big pink tongue come flying out of the water, smack into his forehead, and I'm going to use his... Uh, body as leverage and I'm going to pull myself out of the water <laughs> um, spin over his head land behind him in uh, superhero pose about there mm -hmm. and I am then going to spin my staff around my head uh, while reciting some cool dude spell type words and I'm going to cast wild flame again mm -hmm. um, so that will be on uh, the guy right at the bottom of the screen, the guy to the right whose forehead I just licked and um, the guy in the cool leather cap looking straight up at me and freaking me out um, <laughs> so the, the three closest to you basically the three closest to me, so three Three spell casting rolls plus um, two. One of them. Two, it's a roll for the two archers. Okay, so first roll is a 14 with fear. Okay. Hit. Oh, sorry, no, it's not. It's a 16 with fear. Sorry. Okay, good, but I'll take that fear. Thank you. Make your attack. Oh, shit. Uh, and that is a five. Five damage. Yep. Okay, that is two hit points on the one at the top. Next one at the bottom. Next one is... Uh, ten with hope. Ten with hope misses. Balls. And the last one is... Oh, that's more like it. Um... Uh, this is for the swordsman. 21 with hope. That definitely, very definitely, completely and utterly hits. <clears throat> and that is... Ooh! That's nasty. Uh, 11. That does uh, two damage to him and kills him dead. Even though he's standing in the water, you uh, torch his upper body and leave in just a pair of smouldering, clean, not burnt ankles because they're in the water. <laughs> uh, nice. Um, I don't have a button to just leave the ankles, though, so I'm just going to get rid of the whole token. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but because you rolled with fear, um, we are going to... Uh, uh, spend one of those fears to buy myself two more actions um, and then these guys are going to take shots at you. Uh, <laughs> a um, 12 and a 4. A 12 and a 4? Yeah, the 12 hits. 12 hits. Uh, 12 does 8 damage. Uh, eight is a major, so I'm going to spend an armor to take that down to a minor. So I take one HP. Excellent. Um, and that is me. I'm going to take a shot at one of the archer, the archer closer to me. Okay. Uh. Okay. 
Nice. Uh, no. Uh, no. Just occurred to me, oh. you're a one foot fairy with a short bow. Yeah. Is this a very short bow? It must be. Because it can't be an actual bow. short bow, it would be bigger <laughs> than you. Re relative short bow. Yes, yeah. indeed. With an incredibly high tensile strength. High uh, t tensile strength for its size, yeah. That's only seven. Only seven, that misses. Was it with hope or fear? Hope. Oh, okay, you're very lucky. Yeah. They were shooting back at you otherwise. Um, <laughs> who's up? Um, um, Blossom. Very polite, I, isn't um... it? Yeah, I think you should go first. <laughs> oh, yeah. I... Blossom. When British people. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's not doing it. When you want to Well, uh, I guess. Yeah, I was. What is there? Is there a fire behind this this main this guy with a helmet? Main guy. Uh, it's not fire. No, it's more smoldering at this point in time. Oh right. It yeah. was all on fire, and now it's kind of it's basically to show that that catapult is fucked, and there's a burn oh, right, next okay. to it. Um, mm. uh, I'll swoop. I'll come swooping down with my big great sword, and instead of throwing it, I'm gonna. Actually, yeah, I would like to, as I'm swooping down, sort of throw it, and then um, sort of try and catch up with it and, like, dive it into the sky with the helmet. Oh, all right, then. Um, go on, then. And that is, uh, oh, <laughs> five with hope. <laughs> five with hope. He, oh, uh, I got seven with hope. But he yeah. sees, sees you coming <laughs> and just <laughs> steps to the side, spits in the back of your head. Um, <laughs> um, proper good, big, nasty, chewy gobble loogie. <laughs> you know, something you can right. chew on for a bit. Um, you can't. Take um, a while to wash out. You can't spend your own hope to give yourself ad yourself advantage, can you? It's spend no, hope it's to give life. other it's people assisting, advantage. Yeah. Um, and while you're just recovering... Could I, get, well, then could I spend the hope and shout, Now, Jetsum, I've distracted him! <laughs> to... <laughs> um, I'll just say... And spend the hope. Visible if him <laughs> um, Then swing at this, um, this guy who's just spat on the back of my mate's head. Um, with advantage. Mm-hmm. That's that's well on cock. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Alright. Um that is lots. Um <laughs> twenty one be... with fear. Okay, great. Oh. I'll take your fear, but uh mm. you do hit. Sweet. Um okay, mm. so uh, I uh, yes, I can't add the extra d6 for forceful push, but uh, you can make I, him vulnerable. Okay. Yeah, I'll spend um, a hope to make him vulnerable. What does um, uh, what does vulnerable do? Actually, I've, I don't. Give me one second. I shall it, tell it you. sounds good. I don't I, actually know what it means. I assume it's the opposite uh, of... allows any rolls against that creature to be at advantage. Oh, lovely. Nice. Uh, yeah, temporarily vulnerable. That vague of oh. temporarily. Uh, by the way, Gaz, sorry, I've mm. just found what temporary means as well. It, um, mm. it means that uh, I can end it by spending fear. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, so we, we'll get back, you know, it's gone anyway, but I'll take a fear off because it's gone. Fair. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, okay, well, I do get an extra D6 from still being unstoppable. You must be at the end of your unstoppable now, almost. Oh, uh, I will have only one left after this. Jesus, you're only halfway through it. I know. Well, it's yeah, because a lot of the time I've been dealing yeah. damage from using retribution. <laughs> yeah. um, I will, in fact. Um, oh no, I can't. I don't have any stress. Um, that's fine then. So that is um, seven damage. Seven, that marks two hit points. He's still standing, but he's not looking great. Um, there we go. And I've clocked that down to one. 
next bit of damage I do, I stop being unstoppable. <laughs> well, the next bit of damage you do to him, he dies. <coughs> um, <laughs> Mr. GM, mm. um, I have a Wonderborn um, ability. Uh, yes. My nomad nomadic pack... Uh, you add a nomadic pack to your inventory. Once per session, you may spend a hope to reach inside this pack and pull out a common item that is useful to the situation. <laughs> Work with the GM to figure out what this item is. Um, by any chance, would a health potion be a common item? Or uh, any sort of first aid that I can perform on myself? No. Yeah, did, you not, got... did you not choose a health potion as part of your... Bill, or did you uh, I did. I chose a health potion. Um, Check your equipment. You, you should have. Yeah, you should have picked either a health or a stamina. I think. Uh, oh, minor health potion. I fucking well did. Yeah, yes. There you go. Um, right. Can I take that then? Uh, yeah, absolutely. One d four hit points. Right. Okay. Hang on. Oh shit! I've just planned a cantrip. A cat. Not a fucking cantrip. <laughs> the uh, three uh three excellent yes that will that will make me a little bit more healthy one two two three right okay yes i've drunk my potion thank you very much uh i bought I my my roll was with fear so it, you know bear that in mind oh you've just rolled with <laughs> you've just rolled with fear i, I, Ooh, I rolled oh. my turn with fear yeah okay oh. excellent um, right. That means that my rally dice has just maxed out, which means you all get a d6, and you oh. can use that d6 on any roll. Oh. Um, so any roll you make, you can add your d6 to it. Lovely. Uh, and my rally dice resets back to one. Very nice indeed. But the per ter play passes to me. I will let you take your health potion. Because if you Thank you very one, much. You would have taken it a lot sooner. <laughs> I would have done because um... I'm in the shit. <laughs> I, I'm putting a brave face on it, but... Um, I'm going to activate minion and leader. And we are going to continue wailing on the clank. Um, uh, minion hits on a... Oh, I don't know if I... Did I move my person? I, would, I went past him, didn't you, I? You landed in there, yeah. Or wherever you yeah, I land there. You landed between him trying to stab it down, didn't you? So it depends where you Yeah, but I thought, I thought he moved out of the way and I went past him. Oh, I just sort of, just sort of sidestepped. So, uh, yeah, if you, oh, yeah right. that works. Uh, if you want to go past, that's fine. Uh, I envisage you sort of uh, sticking in the deck right in front of him, but... Uh, all right, okay, yeah, I'll go there. Where yeah, it depends fine. on what angle you're coming in at. Yeah, <laughs> still going for the clank. Uh, so it's a, he hits you on a four uh, sixteen, uh, and the uh, uh, which the one's this hit me? This is the leader hitting you on a sixteen. The, the minion misses oh, yeah, you on a four. Uh, oh yeah, Not off uh, the miss, but I'll no, take no. it. Uh, it's a <laughs> do, 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 four. So half four damage. Two. Yeah, and I will spend my last armor slot. To um, yeah, for to deal, um, oh, nice. reduce it below zero, so I don't take anything, and then deal nine damage back to my attacker. Nine, Jesus! Oh. Yeah. And how do you how do you uh, deal the damage that fatally <laughs> kills the? Uh, <laughs> I know, right? um, uh, what weapon is he using? He's got a. Uh, it's a javelin. Um, oh, nice! Poking weapon. <laughs> Yeah, well, he um, comes in with the javelin to, to spear at me. I'll have it kind of dig into my shield, and I'll lean back with it and then push back so the, the other end of his javelin goes back through his head. Oh, um, that's lovely. <laughs> of his own weapon, yeah. 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 Having seen that happen, the uh, minion immediately dives overboard. And is gone. <laughs> He's just having none of it. <clears throat> like imagine a grunt in here. Lead it down. Starts running off. Um, these guys over here oh. haven't yet noticed, so they are gonna continue as they were. Um, and let me get over here. Given the situation they're in, uh, actually we're not, because they think they've got him, they don't realise he's drunk a health potion. So they're going to advance up here 
towards the fairy. Uh, this guy thinks he's got it all on his own. He's going to take an attack. Uh, which is a nine to hit. It Gaz. won't hit him, will it? I don't think it'll hit him. He didn't say anything. Nine. Gaz. Sorry, did I freeze? Yeah, you might. I don't know. You were moving quite happily. Um... <laughs> oh, no. I said I said no, and I did an evil laugh. No. Oh, no, we didn't get that at all. No, we didn't no. get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, then allow me to uh, reciprocate. No. Ha <laughs> <laughs> This guy's going to shoot at the fairy, uh, which is a 10 to hit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, eight. Eight damage. Well, that's that. Okay. That. And this guy is going to try, having seen the fucking frog do it, he's going to try and run and jump off of there <laughs> and attack the fairy who's high in the air, but he's going to have to do it with disadvantage. Because he ain't a ribbit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that is an eight. Yeah. Yeah? Hey. yeah. Um, so he does it with 2d8, uh, which is... Seven. Can he shout parkour as he does it? Sounds more like a chicken going parkour. Yeah. Yeah. Seven damage to you. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Do the armor slot. Yeah. It passes back to you guys now. Actually, yeah. Uh, and we'll start with. Uh, Orion turning around to this guy. Uh, rolling. Ooh, very nice. 14 with hope. And. Uh, stomping this guy's last hit point out from under him. You just see him sort of blasted back into pieces and then he dies against the boat. Um, nice. Yeah. Orion's pretty hard. I, I, I've, mm -hmm. uh, I've got a possible combo with uh, the big metal man to turn him into a missile. Yeah, right. If I <laughs> grab him, I grab him and pick him up and fly with him. And say, let's fly, get these guys. Come fly. And, uh, <laughs> and I'll. I'll Pick him up and try and get some speed up and head towards these and sort of launch a jetsome at this one. A, jet, a jetsome, a jetsome <laughs> missile. A jetsome, <laughs> yes. A heat-seeking uh, metal uh, man missile. If you are tag teaming, which I imagine you're going to have to do this. You're going to say that's one yes. per session, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Are you only allowed to? Oh, I didn't realize. Sorry. I don't know if you're allowed to instigate or take part in one. No, instigate. Uh, it's, ah. it's one instigation per session. Ah, so okay. You can't you can't yeah. But spend yeah. hopes. Uh, yeah, but because I'll of the way the you're doing it, I'll say you don't get to roll your attack dice because you've launched him, but yeah. the Jetsam gets to roll an extra d6. Uh, what? To, to hit? Uh, no, no, you get to you. You both roll to hit because uh, yeah. you're aiming him and you're swinging as you go. Uh, yeah, but when sure. it comes to damage, only Tom rolls damage, but with an extra d6 because, well, you're a missile in this situation. Yeah, oh, fair enough. fourteen with hope for me. Rolling not great, but with hope. Uh, fourteen with hope. Mm. Well, you hit. Mine so was. It matters not, but if you can crit, even better. Fourteen with fear. But well, it does say that when you're tag teaming, you choose which better. one to use. So yeah. we'll take the one with hope. Oh, nice. Absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah. So then I just roll damage. Add an extra d6. 1d8. Because it was with hope, I get to use a forceful push extra 1d6. Nice. Uh, I feel like, I get a, big, an, I feel like a metal extra... man coming at you. It is a forceful <laughs> yeah. push. And, and yeah. you gave me an extra how much, sorry? Uh, D6. For the tag team. An extra the... D6 for damage. the yeah. damage for the tag team. And I had an extra D6 to spend from the ribbit. 
Yeah, I'll give you a D6 as well. <laughs> so that's uh, 1D8 plus 3D6. Right. Um, so y you need to roll uh, 1. Yes. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have rolled uh, 16. Alright, you um, do you do double his uh, top tier? And literally, it's, it's not so much that the uh, the weapon does anything; it's that your body goes through him, and you are now just wearing goblin pants. <laughs> have, I can just imagine um, Jetson kind of been thrown and just mm. flying down like a, um, like say, like a. a Unguided missile, and then sh through the yeah. um, the orc, this <laughs> spray of blood, and then after all the sand settles, you just see him kind of dead straight, just stuck in the ground, head first, <laughs> with his legs <laughs> like stuck out. <laughs> all right, we will say then that you are prone for your next turn. Fine, that's I'll take that just for yeah. it looking awesomely cool. <laughs> Um, cool. Uh, still with you guys. Uh, there's only two of them left. Do you want to roll it? Do you want to just consider that they're not beating them all? Can I? Um, yeah, no, Gaz wants to roll. Um, can I just uh, start spinning my bow staff um, and then just flip into a sort of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Donatello attack with the bow um, at this guy? We can. Uh, so that is uh, court staff instinct plus one. Uh, that is fifteen with fear. That hits, and that is a one d ten plus two damage, um, which is ten damage. That was, again, you needed to roll a one. You cooked these guys pretty well on your last go. Um, and they, they don't have a minor threshold above... Their minor threshold is one. Right, nice. Um, so, yeah, so I'd like to spin around and then come up with a bow staff under the chin with the intention of hitting him into the water, but I hit him with such force that I just take his head off. And just his head flies into the water, <laughs> and the rest of him just drops to the ground. Nice. Exceptional. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, I took a moment nice. when I realised I'd, I'd moved a large portion of the background away from where it needed to be by accident on the map. And not on the map, on the um, Streamlabs. <laughs> I'm just quickly fixing the video. <laughs> um, oh um, did you say you rolled with hope or fear? Uh, that was with fear, Excellent. and so, then so I would like, I would like to rib it over mm. to in between these two guys, just in case. <laughs> the one that's still <laughs> is half submerged in the sand. <laughs> what color? Is, what color is the the frogman? Is he green as well? No, I'm uh, oh, purple yeah, and blue. Oh, yeah. Right. He's. I mean, he doesn't know what he's going to do right now. He's. Uh, he's going to attack the fairy one last time. Again, same as before. Disadvantage. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, it's it's a Good. one with a disadvantage roll of a one. There you it's go. Pur purple, purple and blue with a cool dressing gown on. If you look. <laughs> yeah. Just, oh, yeah just what have you oh, just yeah. done? <laughs> Take um, who, who's doing the attack? I don't uh, see the, anybody. The, the last gobbo here. He's, he's on the oh, rock. he's up there. He's on the rock. Oh, yeah, um, and he missed. He rolled the one, <laughs> and his disadvantage for trying to get the fairy took that one away. So he rolled a zero, and now he's sat crying on the floor. Go on, Nix. Rip yeah, his he's legs off. Pot shut, pot shut down onto him. Okay. Uh, I'll give you advantage because he's Co one is cock shot. Cock shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pink legs. <laughs> <laughs> that is... I had I, I had flashbacks to the boys. Then I thought you were going to fly up his <laughs> urethra. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the horrible, horrible scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, right, uh... <laughs> broken. She can no longer roll. She needs to take a moment. <laughs> That's 12. That hits. 
With with fear or hope? Um, hope. Hope, right. Well, so I've got the D6. Yeah, two D6. That went flying. That yeah. went down? <laughs> it's yelling it's timber. That That's far. Four. Oh, he's still up. He's still up. Oh, no. He's got one hit point left. Um, but he rolled with hope. So who's going to put him out of his misery? Or are you going to take him prisoner? Or are you going to what? I think we should all surround him. I think we should have... <laughs> like, uh, like Loki at the end of the Avengers. Which is <laughs> while he's <laughs> laid on his back and we all just stand around him with our weapons drawn. Yeah. Yeah, should we try and get some answers? Should we uh, interrogate him? Um, there's any. The, 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 what language do goblins speak? Or, or orcs speak? Uh, 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 Is it a common tongue? Common and green skin, we'll call it. Green skin. U universal language of those um, green skin types. Um, well, uh, well yeah. met. Well met, frogman. Would you like to <laughs> question? This arc. No, well, no way, dude. I mean, this is your uh, this is your gig, man. This was your ship. If you want to uh, take answers, then you go for it. I mean, I'll quite happily stick my bow staff right through his nose. What? The, uh, what was? What was the? Uh, At this point, Magnus has just come down the path. Oh, um, oh you've done what? You've took a prisoner. Excellent work. Oh, you guys. Yeah, I was right in putting your party together. Dude, you literally stood up there and watched us do everything. You are the most useless piece of pink flesh I have ever seen in my life. You let two civilians come down here and fight all these green skins, and I imagine that you're going to go back now and you'll be like, yo, dude, look at me. I absolutely saved the day. You are a big old bag of horseshit, dude. I think you'll find I made an executive decision as a local law enforcement and sent the best people yeah. to the job to protect... The society in which we live. <coughs> Executive that did. And I'm just going to stroll <laughs> off. Yeah. And he's just going to well, sort of um, uh, look at Nix and, and assume command of you. Going, Bring the prisoner and just walk away. <laughs> Assuming you'll follow. No! <laughs> well, um, Jetson's going to pick the prisoner up and mm -hmm. disarm him, throw the weapon to one side <laughs> right. and just and just say you'll answer our questions and you'll come with us more gobbo gunge <laughs> yeah, can I roll some sort of in, no intimidation or I mean, you're welcome to try um, okay just roll um, with let's see what would you roll with you roll with uh, presence. Uh, presence, I'd assume, yeah. Um, also, I'll let you roll I'll... with strength if you're super strong. <clears throat> because, you know, um... you're intimidating. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. Um, I would also like to spend <clears throat> a hope to use um, my <clears throat> mysterious construction because I'm, I'm quite strange-looking and mysterious. <laughs> Um, to add my plus two to that roll. Um, is that... And a, and a, that's um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 with hope. Oh, absolutely, yeah. He's a, yeah, yeah, but no, no, leave me alone! Uh, and then <laughs> I would just start <laughs> carting him off to Orion. <laughs> Yeah, it's an excellent goblin, that Dave. I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> the Ryan's like, what have you brought him for? God, they eat food, you know. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. I can't remember. I have no idea what voice. Mr. Orion, uh, sir, what, uh, what do we do about this situation with our boat? I've never been in a crash before. <laughs> You'd be bloody right. You didn't know what you were doing. You were almost off if it weren't for him. No. Very true. Look, I don't know until I get inside what's up with it, but I think it's in it's in a bad way right now. It's not going it anywhere. It doesn't look great. <clears throat> um, and the 
uh, Magnus the Qatari sort of come back when he realised that no one's listening to him and went, Come to the town, shipbuilding town. We might be able to help. Figure he can okay. get in control of the situation and get the prisoner back his own way again. <clears throat> Mr. Jetson, shall I help you escort uh, your uh, the prisoner? Since we're at this point and everyone's met, do you two want to spend a bit of time and describe your characters now with Calm? Because you've been at it since the start. Yes. Um, well, as uh, everyone kind of see with uh, Jetsam, he is a uh, kind of about six foot two um, clank. He's a, a robot of sorts with the entirely kind of humanoid uh, arms and legs. Um, he's kind of got a... Most of his body is covered in kind of a kind of a bronzy metal, mm. which, uh, other than his kind of uh, face, um, which is kind of like a, a dulled steel color, um, and but then he's kind of got lots of kind of detail on him uh, with like kind of these grooves that mm -hmm. kind of run round him, and then kind of kind of make kind of odd swirls and patterns on down the sides of his temples and down his back. Um, it's kind of an odd mix of, of Deco and Nouveau kind of uh, patterns mm. on, down him. Um, and then every now and again, you get this, this pulse of energy which flows around these lines uh, and kind of goes up his neck, around the sides of his head, around these patterns, and then down his back. Nice. Um, and um, he doesn't wear a, a great deal because um, he doesn't tend to need it. He just got kind of a, a vest on and kind of um, loose short trousers. Mm -hmm. Very good, Blossom. And I am a uh, you see a fairy similar size, but not quite as tall as um, Jetson. A mm -hmm. a fairy insectoid fairy who's sort of like a brownie. Um, lots of. I don't know, insect carapace uh, around him, and on his sort of back, where where his wings would be, see, be you see sort of like a, I don't know, you know, you know that like pearlescent sort of tinge some insects yeah. get. It's like that over. You see it sort of if you catch it at the right angle on his back, where his wings sort of sprout from. You see that he sort of has um, plate armor on as well in in places but you see his hard carapace sort of taking up a lot of what that is so there's like his gauntlets and sort of leg guards and a bit sort of around here but then you see a lot of his carapace showing and and then on his face he has like these weird tusks that sort of look like a mustache like a nice like a, a like a twizzled mustache but they're actually horns and then he has these big sort of things that come up backwards but yes yeah, all sort of brown okay. uh yeah, and but he stands quite upright as he as he walks. Um, holds himself quite well. Uh, mm. Excellent. But yeah, that's uh, Blotsam. Very good. All right. Well, what do you want to do? Well, um, yeah, is he's offered that um, to Let's... help me escort him. <clears throat> yes. Well, um, make sure they I'm don't. Gonna... Uh, he doesn't get free. Yeah, I'm not gonna carry him the entire way. We're going to find something to bind him. I, we were all, I shall um, tie him with my new t rope tying skills dirty, you showed me. Dirty cradle <laughs> shivers. Dirty, dirty cradle stuff. No, Grax does not oh, work. My, it's, uh, Quiet and down, green are quite skin. dangerous. He's <laughs> <laughs> just spit flying everywhere. He's sat down. He's refused to do anything. I'll, While push we were... I'll push some like uh, I don't know like material in his mouth. Be quiet. Creature <laughs> <laughs> annoyances ends in death. <laughs> While we're all stood together, uh, I'm just gonna like big everyone up. Like, oh, dude, that was totally, totally epic. The way you, like, dealt with them green guys, it was amazing. You came in and the ship was on fire and you were just like, dude, and they were like, dude, and you were like, dude, and you just, like, knocked everyone out. And, oh, man, it was, like, totally awesome. And I'm going to imbue that speech uh, with enchanting power. Uh, I'm going to take a mark of stress, and everybody that can hear it can either... Clear a stress, heal a hit oh. point, or gain a hope. I shall. I shall. I'll clear I a think, stress. I think clear a... Yeah, I think maybe... 
I'll clear a hit point. And then I will, um... I'm gonna lay on... I'm gonna mending touch, so I'm gonna... Seeing that Jetsam's been hurt quite a bit in this fight, and he looks Lots like he's... And... Yeah, he looks like he's, he's stressed. Uh, I'm gonna spend... <clears throat> so it says... He spend a few minutes to focus. So I'm gonna spend... It says two hope uh, to heal at point of stress. But I'm going to spend uh, four hope and heal two stress. I've, have you got two stress to be healed? Well, I think oh, yeah. take, your, take your pick. Two. <laughs> yeah, uh, it says a, a stress or a hit point for you. Oh. Uh, um, so what? What? Yeah, a, one of each. Yeah. So two. Two of them. So you could have one of each. Two. Oh, of one I'll, 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 I'll let one you of choose. Each. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Looking much me better. Down to, um, much better. Three out of six hit points and three out of five stress. So. Ryan, Appreciate. at this point, by the way, you know, has sort of walked through the whole thing kind of semi-unscathed. A um, couple of bruises, but not much more. He's gone back up to the boats and he's like, Oi, look, we've got wounded over here, you know? Chinwag later, come on. <laughs> <clears throat> and there's still the, there's still the, the four people yeah. over there. Um, oh, you know, yes. Two of which are in a horrendous way and, and still unconscious. Um but obviously, yeah, we've got the guys have, have come down now. Um, but there's only we best, two, uh, two horses because uh, we best help some uh, carry these. <laughs> we best help carry these men back to town. Maybe that would be wise. We could help them there. Okay. Oh, that voice uh, kills me. I'll I'll load up. Uh, uh, I can manage two. I feel like I'm quite a strong guy. Yeah, it's, I, I'll in fact at this point realizing that he's actually wounded, still left. I'll throw the prisoner at the guards, townsman, whatever. <laughs> Take him. Uh, I knew you'd see sense. Not our priority. Mm, thank you. Back to the town. Come quick. Yeah, I'll help. I'll grab mm -hmm. wounded. Yeah. Um, and while that's happening, Orion scurries inside the um, ship, comes out with a sack and a couple of things. Well, like, they've picked most of it clean, but I've got some. Let's go, come on. You reckon it's fixable, Mr. Orion? Uh, anything's fixable, but she's not flying anytime soon. Uh, we'll get her, we'll get her seaworthy, maybe, depending on what facilities they've got at this here shipbuilding town. Right you are. Facilities uh, to build ships. Well, yes, in, indeed, Jetson, and uh, you are right to make an observation, but I wish you'd keep it to yourself sometimes, it gets tiresome. Um, <laughs> now, in the meantime, we've got to work out how to float her, so uh, let's go back and see what they've got. <clears throat> and on the way back, it's like, wood floats. <laughs> uh, aye, aye. Aye. Wood back. floats, but, but not when it weighs thousands of pounds and has holes in it. You know that, right? You you know that the, the flotation isn't just a fact. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. He just says nothing. I'm just carries <laughs> I'm just chuntering at him. Take, taking out all my uh, uh, stress. I admit mine. Like I'm acting. This is, yeah. I'm not a character today, Dave. Remember this. Um, anyway, I'm going to so... land on someone's shoulder because I'm tired of flying now. I'm just going to flop yeah. myself. You so easily you... land on either of ours, I think. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to land on Flotsam, because he's another fairy. You've got a um, journey back, but it's, it's you know... Gorebred's, Gorebred's still on the beach. Um, Gorebred found a shell that was quite shiny, and he was like this, <laughs> like holding it up to the light, and he turns around and realises everybody's fucked off, <laughs> so he quickly starts playing, <laughs> trying to catch you up. Good so, Miss God. Fairy, uh, we didn't catch your name. I'm oh. Flotsam. This is my robot friend here, Mr. Jetsam. I'm alright, nice to meet you. Nix! And... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm called Brad Gill, but uh, my bros call me Brad. Well, Brad, you seem fairly handy with your tongue and bow staff. Uh, yeah, man, I mean, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Visible confusion. How many brothers do you have? Uh, you know, like everyone's my bro, bro. You know, 
I mean, I like to move about. I like to get to know people. Uh, I'm, you know, all about the love. Unless you're a goblin, in which case I'm all about the stick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you should hear his poetry. It's, it's quite good. Oh, you're a poet. I've never heard poetry. Uh, it sounds delightful. Yeah. It's just like words that rhyme. Nothing Wonderful. special, dude. <laughs> Bear in mind that the time you'll have spent on the boat, you'll have heard various shanties. And everything. Yeah, yeah, plenty of the, 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 There are plenty of words, but... words that rhyme that maybe you hadn't considered were poetry until now, this very moment. <laughs> That's him. Is that poetry? Would you call these the shanties poetry? Is that an Sounds observation? Possibly... <laughs> <laughs> uh, songs and poetry. Songs Turns can be poetry. I may have heard poetry, poetry can could not be songs. I may have broken the robot man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't tell Orion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we so, just mosey back to town. You're happy, yeah, waiting for you to um, be, be, be content with talking the Talking nonsense. <laughs> yeah, talking nonsense all the way. The goblin sort of, that message, oh, this gone. Oh, this, ah, alone now. Um, and you get back no problem and very quickly the uh, horses uh, take the wounded and um, take them to the, uh, the best place to be the local uh, apothecary which is a, a shop called the Apostles Carry and uh, Evelyn Thornbloom who is a, uh, a Galapa Tort very slow, purposeful tortoise healer. Um, and so one of the guards take, takes your wounded there to, to recuperate and, and have as best as it can be done for them. Uh, and the rest of you are invited to uh, the fortified Old Town, which is where the jail is and where um, the council works and, and where the mayor's office is. Um, and so Cedric, not in his um, not in his pub now, but actually in the more well-to-do part of the town up the top here, um, meets with you all and went, Well, who have we got here then? This is very exciting. Uh, thank you so much for doing all of your... I, I hear you helped these... Uh, you helped our security team uh, quite well. Uh, the security team looked very tired, but it seems like you took the edge off for them. Well done. Um... Your town has a security team. <laughs> I've been out with them. Look, there he is, that, that, that fine Magnus there. He's very good in that pur purposeful halfling there. Top of the line, as far as I'm concerned. We've not met. <laughs> well, okay. We ignores the robot and looks for the person he thinks might be in charge. Um, anxiously looks around and decides that he's already met the... Uh, um, the two people from his town, and they can't possibly be in charge, so looks at the dwarf and went, Ah, hello, sir, how are you? Oh, I'm not bad, thank you very much. It's been a bad day, though. My boat's all broken. Um, <laughs> ah, so, so I hear, but, uh, you know, uh, what, what, where, where have you come from? He came from up there. And they back and forth for a bit, and basically the gist of it is, is that you were, uh, no, you, the boat, Ship can't call it a boat. That's really not fair. If it goes in space, it's not a boat. <laughs> um, the the ship was a um, a reclamation mission out from the cradle, which is the mega city uh, and sort of administrative centre of anything extraplanetary. Uh, and it was basically an archaeological mission uh, because ah. the outer solar system is a ruin. There's the only the, the, there are no other planets anymore. Major conflict eons ago left nothing but debris and ruins out of which the world. And this is this is common knowledge to everybody, but and it's sort of taught that the world you're on is a sort of a sanctuary. In fact, that's its name is sanctuary, and that it was um, provided by the gods after the fabled war of greed, which left the rest of their um, local area of space completely uninhabitable but 
missions regularly fly up and out into the solar system to sort of explore and, and discover uh, relics of the past and, and things of power or just people's history and, and the history of before your world and you were on your way back from a from a mission and it's not uncommon that there are the occasional orc and goblin and other raiding sort of boats out there but this was a much bigger more concerted attack there was a dozen dozen vessels and you moved in your ship had moved in to help uh and was was swiftly boarded and you found yourself out of the blockade line and plummeting towards it you've no idea what's going on up ahead you've lost contact and so the mayor's very, oh, well, this is very important stuff. We don't get cradle business here very often. We barely get stuff from World's Edge. No, this is important. We must uh, we must help you. Of course we shall help you. Um, no, let's... Um, uh, you say the rest of your crew was on the other ship? Ah, it was. Yep, no, it was, it was, it was well lost. It's like, well, that, um, that went up into the hills uh, past the forests. I can't say for sure, uh, but if anyone survived, they'd be up there, maybe. We've not heard back from the logging camp since, but it's only been a few hours. So, you know, you might do well to look there when you're, when you're rested and recovered and ready to go. In the meantime, I'll happily send some of our finest engineers to the bay to see if we can retrieve your ship. And so he offers you um, free lodging at his pub. The launch, not at oh. the really fine, not at the really fine pub that's uh, in uh, the old town quarter, uh, but at the one he owns, so that he clearly gets the uh, uh, the pride of uh, having the, uh, uh, the the folk from Cradle in his uh, in his establishment and a little bit of the reputation of being a uh, a more worldly man. Um, but it's up to you. What do you want to do now? You're in the town. You're battered. You're weary. Um, there's another ship that's crashed in the hills nearby somewhere uh and that was just yeah. that was um that was the ship with the captain the first was, mate and the, yeah, that was the green skin mm, ship they they were they'd gone yeah. over there to try and you know thinking they could wrest control of it by the sound yeah of it. um okay <clears throat> so yes yeah, so we, we need to yeah so we need to go but yeah the, so the, the rest... mayor looks you over and just like recover it i've got a blacksmith a blacksmith, you say? Uh, my armor, and I think Mister Jetsum's here, could uh, could use a bit of repair. Well, it looks like he's had a ding, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm sure we could get the blacksmith onto you. Let me uh, let me see if the uh, the lad is available. Um, and, and you've got um, there's two blacksmiths. There's the one in the shipyard who's fairly cranky standard sort of does all of the uh, essentials for ships and he's probably going to be less inclined to help but the guy in the old town Arter of Arter's Axes uh, who regularly builds uh, or, or forges stuff for the lumber camp and the lumberjacks uh, would be quite willing to take a look at you he's not a specialist by any means but he's skilled you know not armor specialist certainly but he can uh, he'll, he'll certainly be able to look yeah. over bits of um armor work but other than that i have with access to be able to kind of set, almost self-repair mm -hmm. cool well with yeah so you, you've material. got access yeah. that is um that place is actually really close that's the uh the red building on the uh, uh left of town uh with the field behind it um let's say left okay. of, on the right of town sorry um oh. yeah you got the gatehouse, then you've got the uh, building with the two wings and the blue circle. That's the council. Oh, and just okay. below that, you've got the blacksmith. Um, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, but you, you're Brilliant. all obviously invited to stay in the uh, in the launch down here, and you've got freedom of the whole town. So. Uh, what time of uh, what time of day is it? Are we on? It's, it's sort of heading towards evening now. I would say it was after lunch, mm. uh, so it's getting to the point where. You know, the sun's not going down yet, but it's it's later in the day. So, what what would um, be a short rest? What would constitute a short rest? Okay, so an hour. A short rest. Um, let me see. Times of the have. essence to mount a rescue party. Yeah, yeah short a short rest is an hour, and you, you can choose. take. Are you doing two? You doing this? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, a short rest is an hour, and you can take two actions unless. Some classes have 
ability oh, that allows you to do extra one. Yeah, mine, 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 mine I can do three as well. So yeah. you may choose to yeah. tend to wounds, where you patch yourself up and clear 1d4 hit points. You can yep. also choose to do this to an ally. <clears throat> you can clear stress and clear 1d4 stress. You can repair armor and clear two used armor slots. Uh, and then you can also prepare, which allows you to gain hope. Um, well, the th the three I'd want to do is D4 hit points, D4 stress, and two armor slots. Do yeah, you same. have three? Um, yeah. I know, Flotsam does, does Jetsam? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I do. Because we're, 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 we're both Seaborn, which gives ah, us that. Handy. Very good. Um, <clears throat> and what, what I'll say is you don't mm -hmm. need to worry about repair armor because the blacksmith has said he'd look at all of that for you. Oh, sweet. Oh yeah, fine. Oh, cool. Okay then. So, so we don't need to use our. Uh, you can you can do one more than yeah, once yeah. as well. Help. Prepare prepare gives you a, a hope. Oh right, yeah. So you can do one more than once. Well, I, I haven't we... said that. I don't see. Why I don't you think couldn't. you could. No. Right. Really? I, d I didn't know if you could. I just assumed that you couldn't. But that's just an assumption. I'd not actually read anything. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's. it's vague to be honest um yeah at this point so uh if you yeah do with whatever you feel you would do at okay this one time through. um then i'd just do one d4 for each of our oh, health yeah. points stress and then mm -hmm. gain a hope okay cool so but the, the uh, rest of you do that um yeah i've cleared i've cleared all my h c and my stress quite nicely all the foreigner yeah great so. Right, um, I only rolled a one on my hit points, but I only had two hit points, so I'm still at one hit point, but I cleared all my stress. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, I've cleared all my stress. I'm down to one hit point. Yeah. That's all right. Very good. Right, now, I know this is a one-shot, um, but that <laughs> fight went on for a long time, and it's 10 past it 12. There is it seems like fight, reasonable another, time to stop. It, it sounds like it might be a two-shot. In fairness. <laughs> yes! Um, yes! Oh, I'm more than yes. happy to do yeah. that. More than uh, happy. So, do you want to spend a bit of time in and around the town, or do you want to say, let's call it here for a bit and we'll pick it up um, when we pick it up, which will be mm. in however many weeks' time? I I, I think we probably best pick, call, pick, pick it up it next time. Next time. Yeah. Okay, that works for me. We can have We've a good think good about point. what we want to do then. Yeah, yeah, so it was a bit more time to... I mean, you all yeah. worked very well together. It was great. I was really happy to see it. But, I thought, Dave, um, Dave was adamant this wasn't going to be more than a one-shot when I said this is going to go on, and already it's really more than a one-shot. <laughs> this is fucking mint. Yet. Yeah. It's, this it's, is mint. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's a really great system. So, yeah, let's... let's um, what, other than it's a really great system, come on, constructive feedback, criticisms for this playtest before we sign off. Um, well, there was only a couple of areas which I weren't sure about, but we pretty much cleared them up, didn't we, as we were going? The, the, um, mm. I don't think there was any, mm. I don't think there was anything I did that I found there were holes. Um, I think with a bit of digging, we found out mm. the answers. Yeah. yeah, but I think it, the, the only kind of um, issue I think we had, being all incredibly polite to each other, is not having a strict... Um, yeah. Initiative role yeah. and everybody going well. I don't know who's going to go first. Who's going to yeah. go? Yeah. Um, I I think in person that'd flow a lot better. But it's like virtual, it's one of, it's one of the yeah. it's just one of the barriers of the virtual thing. Mm. Um, which I, I imagine in per well, in fairness, I think yeah. would yeah. Yeah. define that. As you learn, as we learn what each character's strengths and. How they act and stuff. I yeah. imagine we'd we'd sort of have an inkling who'd be going first or who'd want to then follow up what you were doing and stuff. So, especially I, from... because in this one we were we were spread across the battle map yeah. as well. So yeah, so it's sort know, of like if we're in tight two areas, we're like you do this, then I'll do that, and then you yeah. do yeah. this, and then we'll work mm. more more coherently. Yeah. yeah. From Excellent. from my side, it seemed like Dave, you had quite a lot to keep track of with like your pools of. Uh, I don't know the I, I don't I know the rules around it. Definitely the points use tokens and tokens next time rather than yeah, to do and the, and the, no the, when a fear happens and then what you can do with them. That's, uh, that that no. seems that seems like that could be quite tricky to keep track of. 
I think uh, it will get. I, I think, think it's probably the first time. Also, I mean, it's you know, my first time GM in anything in years, mm. and mm. Uh, you know, getting back into that. But yeah, I think a session or two, and it'll be no problem. Yeah. Uh, in fairness, you use either a scroll down dice or a magic life counter or something. And yeah, I think that will away. work an absolute treat. And I've got dozens yeah. of scroll down dice in that box down there, so I should have done mm. that. Uh, yeah. So I think that. And, and to be fair as well, it was just because I was juggling multiple screens. Uh, and Tom's yeah. been doing this for us for a long time and is a dab and it's, it, but it, it is tricky. It took a while for me to get used to doing that, but I've been doing it for a few years now. So, yeah, it's yeah. not the easiest of things to do when you're virtually DMing. It's, it's a trick. Even now, I am well aware that when I change the soundtrack back to the normal soundtrack, I forgot to put continue on and it's all ended and we're silent. So, yeah, little things. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think it, it is what you take from it. Um, certainly yeah. in combat the fear stuff the fear system works for being able to jump in and inter- interrupt and stuff I mm. uh, having read the rules and until we have a go I won't know I'm not so sure how keen I'm going to be on spending fear to you know make NPCs behave a certain way sometimes mm. I think that would be more natural not to bother and just do it as you will but um, it does give you mm. something that you can use and explain I suppose so we'll see how that goes um, yeah but yeah, um, it'd be, really it'd be interesting. How, how many hope has everybody got? Because um, my rally dice, because I haven't hit the threshold again, I get to share out what's left in hope. Oh, I so, have none. <laughs> and I, spent none. My, I spent all mine oh. to uh, heal or get rid of Tom's stress. Yeah. Uh, well, I've, 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 I've still then. got three. I mean, after doing that short rest, I've now gone back up to three. Cool. Right. How many have you got, Nix? I got three. Three. Right. So I've got two then. So, um, Flotsam, you take two hope. Oh, nice. Thank you. Ace. Right. Then. Take that. Shall we um, finish marking that up? Finish your short rest, and as you all take your ease and, uh, and buff out the, the battles the, gone. The burning question in my mind is can we level up? I know, I know, but because we're only playing two, it would just give us a bit more to get stuck into. We're I think. not only we're playing, playing two. So two. No. We're <laughs> not only playing two. <laughs> no. There's no way this will end in two. It's too good. <laughs> I'll let you know before the next session. Yeah. Um, I don't okay, know. Yeah. We'll, we'll fair, this this is um, this system's capped at ten levels rather than yeah. twenty. Yeah, yeah it needs to be slower. So it needs longer, to be a slower progression. Uh, yeah, yeah. I did appreciate that you all were just like, yeah, actually, level one characters are pretty awesome. So um, yeah, they are. Cool. You can yeah, do a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so it's we'll perfect. See how we go. If you like role playing, it's fucking mint, isn't it? I mean, if you. If you enjoy the, the the imagination side of it and the things that you can do, I really mm-hmm. buzzed off that, that you could just go, oh, I'm going to do something mentally. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I really, I really think as well this is a great system to be able to bring people more into that kind of side of things because you have to dis- yeah. describe how you do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like with, with your like ability, the... saying you have to use three rhyming words to be able to get your ability to trigger. It's like that's what you have to do. That's writing um, scanlan into the rules. Yeah. <laughs> Effectively, yes. Yeah. I like um, the uh, I like the team up that's actually yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah that's fun. fun. <laughs> yeah. It, it's both and then next and session, awesome. we'll have to do all again. Yeah. You, do, you can start again for the next one, which is great. Right, anyway, let's um end this here. Um and yeah, thanks for joining us, those of you who did, and For the rest of you who are going to catch up on the podcast in a bit, I can't wait for you to see it. Please do join us for the next one. Leave us a like and a subscribe. And until the next time, 